This NFL picks week three edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Game Time. Snag the tickets without the stress. Use promo code SGPN on your first purchase to save twenty dollars. Download the Game Time app and use promo code SGPN. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play the Underdog Pick'em in college or NFL and win up to twenty X in one game. Plus, every Sunday they're giving away a hundred thousand dollars. Use promo code SGPN Underdog Fantasy for a one hundred percent deposit bonus up to one hundred dollars. Finally, we're brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. Hey, everybody, Jim McMahon here, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. G man, I'm back, Sean. Let's <laughs> go, baby. Thursday night. <laughs> Woo! Thursday night. Are you seeing under this? The lights. No one believes in us. Andrew Thomas out. I'll get ahead of it. They don't have a chance. <laughs> Who fucking cares? Then why are sharps coming back on the big key number of eleven? I don't Dog. mean to jump ahead. Wow, the, Ryan! Don't tip your hand. We haven't given out our Thursday night pick. What do you mean? No, we haven't given oh, out. We yeah. haven't well, started. I, this is the I NFL. I haven't given out my pick yet. No, that's I what was I'm just saying. commenting You're... on the market dynamics of the situation, <laughs> and love... then I'm excited. And uh, yeah, I'm here. You're here. I'm We're here. here. NFL Week Three off to a uh, pretty good start. Both of us, Kramer, with it. I don't even know if I want to speak the percentage of your locks. It's like addressing a no hitter, but you are on a you you are on a very nice streak there. I'm 19, 11, and two ATS overall. Hundred percent on my dogs. Hundred percent on my tees. Only fifty percent on my locks, but we'll get there. But 19, 11, and two. I mean, they say professional handicappers can only do it at fifty three percent. Then what are you getting sixty three percent? That's a bonus ten percent on top of these other hacks. People want to know where they can find the good picks that you're saving for your other circa entry. <laughs> My other circuit entry. Yeah, the what good picks that you're saving for that entry. People so, want to know how they can get those picks. If you want, I can start uh, tweeting out. I have two circuit entries. One I do with Ryan that we've given out on the show. I think we're five, four, and one. So hanging around. And then one I do with my buddies from high school. We are we were five and zero oh week one, and then two, two and one last week. So we're oh, seven, no. two and one overall. Nice. Yeah, I'll take it. Producer I, Josh, I think's like eight and two. Yeah, I I, I think. Just as someone who's done the contest a number of years, yes, it's not always great uh, in the beginning, and so just being uh, as our pro- above five hundred, gotta yeah. stay stay alive. As our proxy will always say, the goal is to be five hundred at week four. <laughs> the goal right, is go. the goal is not to be crushed. Uh, we will uh, this morning. We actually taped uh, Tales from Vegas Part One. It was uh, it was a lot of fun. Multiple different stories about me puking. Uh, we had the Ferrari guy story. Number of uh, great, ep- uh, just great. I don't know, it was it was a lot of fun because Kramer and I, we kind of have a list kicking around, and then oh, can we actually fill up an entire episode? We have plenty left over for a Tales from uh, Vegas Part Two. Oh, <laughs> I mean, so so make sure I think this is a Star Wars. Situation. <laughs> it could be its own its own other, yeah, we'll spinoff galaxy prequels sequels. Well, because like I said in the episode, we're go- we're out in Vegas every Friday night. This Friday as well, nine o'clock on Veasan. So make sure you go sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash Patreon. Get in, do your part on the war against corporate gambling. We also have the uh, prop sheets up there. Essentially, all the picks we give out on our show. If you're driving, operating. Heavy machinery can't can't write it down. We got those uh, sheets, and then our Patreon weekly pick them. Last week we gave out uh, Nike or Jordans. Kramer, tell the people what we're giving out this week. Oh wow, week. you're putting me on the spot. Yes. I like that. It's a new bit. Uh, well, you know, you know what? Game worn. What? Game what? worn. 
Uh, inter- no. Game worn and interception. Uh, number twenty six, of course, for my hero Saquon Barkley, uh, who rest in peace. <laughs> may may God. Uh, as you saw, this is the Kramer jersey. I'll sign it if you want. Uh, but yeah, I, th- the, the the jersey. So Ryan is holding up. If you're not, how watching- many people compete for this shit? youtube.com slash sports game and podcast. I don't know off the top of my I'll head how up. many uh, get in there, but this is a sweet custom made fantasy of uh, football Jersey that we used at the expo to go. zero and two Kramer did have the biggest play on our uh, team. And yeah, I'm not uh, trying yeah. to brag, but I had the only plan. Yeah. Uh, it says SGPN DJs got our logo. Like Ooh. I said, uh, we got, and let's, let's zoom in. We got uh oh, look at this Kramer wow. on the back. And shout out to uh, it was these was, jerseys are pretty. I, I don't want to. Was Gary Brad? Uh, shout out to the fantasy team for uh, for designing. They, they were just yes, Brad uh, from the uh, SGPN fantasy football. Kind enough to get those uh, made up, design those. The, the jerseys are fire. So sports game podcast the com slash Patreon. Get in, get your chance to win a uh, win a jersey. That Normally, when I ignore you, you take care of the problem. Yes, this time I made it your problem, Ryan. Uh, hey, also we had a uh, Terrell and Lante on last night for the Thursday night props first touchdown bet. So if you're going to tweet at me, uh, what are your first touchdown bets? I'm going to say one follow Kramer. He's hot, but also two at least download the episode. And then I will uh, reveal the, uh, the first touch. That's good. I, I don't actually always go with that plan. I get a lot of DMS and I, I do say, you know, please check out the show. <laughs> yes. Do you want my deep explanation? It seems like much like uh, there's some pick sluts out there. I get uh, it. I think they're all pick sluts. <laughs> I don't think people really enjoyed my meaningful justification as to why TJ Hawkinson was a great value. I don't think they really enjoyed my long ramble about to, to discuss the Pittsburgh Steelers defense being a great value at 35 to one. <laughs> I think they just like the outcome. Yes. I'm a process guy. Most people, they just like that beautiful rock hard outcome. Trust the uh, rock trust, hard process. <laughs> trust the process, indeed. Uh, the the chat is lit as always. A uh, research spherical Earth says <laughs> need proof of life for research flat Earth. Yes, research oh. flat Earth has not been in the chat. So if you're listening, again, um, you know, it, we I don't necessarily share the uh, well. I do share the belief that we should research uh, the dynamics of the Earth, but I always enjoy seeing you in the chat and. Hopefully, research spherical or his bully did not turn you away from the show. Um. <laughs> you think he? You think that was it? Mm. It, it was pretty controversial for a while. Yes, uh, we are also getting questions by Nick Greenwall in the chat saying, "Is producer Josh actually real?" Yes. What do you no, mean? Is not, producer Josh? He real. is real. He is a uh, hardcore DJ, but yeah, he lo- he likes lurking in the back. Well, and also, he's one hundred percent a human. Wh- why would we have an imaginary <laughs> friend and take it as far to put a column in the sheets? Yes. Which obviously, if you're in there, you already know. <laughs> yes. But like, own- why would we take the time to do that? <laughs> I would not. I would not be spending the I, time. I saw the anonymous sl- uh, sloth just pop in for mm. a second. I know they know that producer Josh is real. <laughs> and honestly, uh, he he is also sometimes an Easter egg. If you ever bump into us in, in person, he might yes. be there. He could. Yeah. Listen, I would say that if we're uh, at, if we're at a, if he's out in Las Vegas and we're at a table, <laughs> producer Josh is also there trying to run up a sweet crabs run, sweet blackjack run. He also has a little bit of Kramer in him where he'll just be like, uh, I'll be right back. Oh, heading up a to little. the room. Uh, I, I got a, I, I got like a sense over here at this, uh, this pie gout table. I'll be uh, right back. Guys. Yeah. I know the first time that, that, that happened. Ryan I and actually I looked at proud. each other. Yeah, we're like, Oh like, yeah. Josh is, this is, Josh is one of us. He gets yeah, it. We, no, I've seen that look before. I, I also would love to run off to gamble by myself. <laughs> so no one will see the outcome. Uh, all right, Sean. Uh, yes. Before we address the uh, week three in the national okay. football league, wow. which by, which by the way, you uh, I do. I do think your overall record has been impressive. So, oh wow! Which, Thank but, you. Let me add. Um, I'm trying to get those locks up. That's what matters for the folks. And if not for the damn Broncos, I mean, who knew? Who knows where we could be? Yeah, and and certainly there there within these, there's been some well, slight like uh, obviously the Rams plus seven and a half fortunate, but on the other side, like I picked Green Bay when we picked it, it was minus two and a half. Now, if you actually bet it right before kickoff, it was plus two and a half. Mm-hmm. You would have cashed that one. So there are some that go both ways. 
Uh, eh, just like life. Even I saw ways. even someone uh, graded Philly as a win because uh, there were places that had it at minus five yeah. and a half. And uh, kickoff Carolina. Uh, was a push for everyone on our episode, but a lot of people had three and a half minus one twenty. So. And just so we're clear, like we we're gonna just use we always grade <laughs> when we give it out. I don't pull any of that Colby bullshit of giving out three <laughs> different picks at two separate lines. The number we do on the podcast yes. is the pick. That's fair. Yeah, one hundred percent. And, and uh, but what I was really getting to is, d- do we have any process to review like the elevation trend? Maybe. Ooh. Are we the, the Broncos elevation trend? Uh, that, that, that to me was beat out by Russell Wilson. Is is personally? Do you know I I uh, went up by eighteen points or more? Do you know what Sean Payton's record was? Uh, it, it, Going into this previously <laughs> to this situation, did it go down? What what do you, just yeah, ru- I'm, just rough? I'm guess. gonna guess he lost like twice, maybe once. Seventy two and zero. <laughs> So to say, it was, you know, Russell Wilson's taken down Hall of Fame coaches. He's Sean. taken down thin air. There is nothing that can stop Russell Wilson from single-handedly destroying this Broncos. Team. Did you include concussions? Because he, <laughs> he took the, he already took down. Those. Oh God, I wish he would get a concussion. And they put Jared Cinnamon. The 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 other thing with the Broncos, and I don't know if we talked enough about it on the recap show, but their defense sucks. Like I, I, I was no. really that to me was the biggest shocker. Not that Russell Wilson had some turnovers, but that the defense. At home, let up 35 points to the Commanders. That was to me was the most shocking result. Uh, yeah, my big takeaway for myself is just beware of the Texans next season. <laughs> don't, don't do it again, right, Ryan. We even put it in the calendar. Remind Ryan not to fall in love with the Texans. Although oh, fuck, it happened. Although CJ Stroud and I got some great CJ Stroud Ohio State quarterback nuggets uh, for that game. But CJ Stroud fourth in the league. In passing yards. Now, granted, a lot of that's garbage time, but still, interesting uh, stat. Oh, it's good for, for my best fantasy. Ball. Good for my best ball, Sean. All my <laughs> shitty teams, people laughed. Uh, Dan Jones, Ryan Tannehill, CJ Stroud. It was Stroud. really a good Baker day for Mayfield. You can all suck it, dude. I, I yeah, my Baker Mayfield <laughs> shares are looking good, Sean. That industry league where we were, like, honestly, one of the more disrespectful things that's ever happened. I, like I can think of a couple disrespectful things that have happened to us as a business. Yes, and it, and it's generally like you guys aren't what you think you are. But yes. being made the long shot in a pros <laughs> versus Joes competition, the Joes were favored ahead of Joe, us. Joe, six Joes and five other quote unquote pros. <laughs> well, we currently sit in first place. So yes. y'all y'all can suck it. You all right? Let's let's talk football, Sean. Let's talk football. Hey, Ryan. Before we get to that, oh man, this is so awesome! It is uh, Little Caesars. They're on board of uh, Little Caesars, the official pizza sponsor of the NFL. Tomorrow night, Thursday night football. Already, I, I'm chomping at the bit. I already have my cart filled up with Little Caesars, the pretzel crust, pepperoni. I'm telling you, is it? It. it I mean, I grew up on Little Caesars. It is. It, it just go. It just pairs perfectly with po- football. Little Caesars. Josh has the menu up. YouTube.com slash Sports Game Podcast. Every time we do these reads, I get so freaking hungry. Think of the crazy bread, the cheesy bread. I have not had the uh, cookie dough brownies, but I mean, my God, like it, <laughs> just to me, when you're watching football, when you need a game day meal, you need something simple, delicious that fills you up that you don't have to think about. Doesn't take any effort. Uh, I back in the day, I used to always get the hot and ready, pick it up, Ryan. When we were roommates back in the day, how many uh, NFL Sunday tickets <laughs> were capped off with a nice little hot and ready? Now they have delivery. So tomorrow night, aka Thursday night football, we're gonna be ordering a shit ton of uh, Little Caesars, the four quarter calzone. It's a calzone, but it looks like a throwing star of flavor. Man, I cannot wait to hop into some Little Caesars. Love Little Caesars. Make sure you make Little Caesars a part of your game day tradition. Uh, tweet us if, if you if you're if you're going Little Caesars Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night. Tweet us your Little Caesars order, and the uh, I'll say this: the most badass Little Caesars order will get a twenty five dollars SGPN gift card. So tweet us what you're getting from Little Caesars at Gambling Podcast. Obviously, you'll get a retweet and uh, might win yourself a gift card there. Little Caesars, love it, Kramer. How, wow, uh, I mean a throwing star of flavor. I, well, that's what it, it's uh, a calzone, I, but they, it's shit. a four sided calzone. Yeah. There uh, I mean, it's with, it's like a sharp it's, it's awesome. Yes. Imagine uh 
maybe we could have some competitions with some little Caesars food. Listen to this. You get the four quarter calzone meal deal. You get the, the, the giant calzone. You get a nice helping of breadsticks and a two liter of Pepsi. Could Patty C eat the whole calzone? <laughs> we are. We do have to come up with a uh, Patty C versus pizza, some sort of uh, little Caesars challenge. Now maybe it's putting down an entire Order of wings, Italian cheese bread, cookie dough brownies, Detroit, uh, whatever. Eleven it is. Little Caesars <laughs> versus eleven mini Dickus. <laughs> Patty C is a heavy favorite against any menu item at Little Caesars. So we we got a uh, man versus food, um, some sort of Little Caesars challenge here. Uh, I mean, I I want to say I I would I wonder if he could eat a calzone an hour on a college football <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> Uh, we'll have to have some plastic uh, bags uh, to help make sure we have enough cleaning supplies to clean up the mess so the plane doesn't have to land. <laughs> Thursday night football. How diabolical. Back to back West Coast trips for the New York Giants on Thursday night, shortened week against the all world best team in the entire league, San Francisco 49ers. Yep. Brock Purdy could be, could be the MVP, best quarterback we've seen. Since Joe Montana, Steve Young, one of those guys, I forget who they were comparing him to. Uh, the look ahead here was four and a half, and now it's ten. Okay, five seventy-five on the money line. <laughs> Giants plus four twenty-five. Forty-four and a half is the total. Of course, as I shared with you in the preseason, uh, they are obviously staying out west. They requested these games to be back to back. The league. Graciously honored it, even though John Maris spit in Goodell's face <laughs> over the Thursday really night flex rules. Him. And uh, just in general, very small sample size, but the first batch of road back to back spots, one and three ATS for the team in that situation. So obviously not good if they were going home, but they're culture building. They're well, staying out together. <laughs> so much not so to they're gonna rest their best player in Andrew Thomas. <laughs> and no Saquon big deal. Barkley. And their second best player in Saquon Barkley. Well, I don't know. He Graham Gano is is healthy, Ryan. He is playing. Okay. Uh, that's that's key to the team. And I think we're gonna listen. I'm listening. This is a kitchen sink game. They have a tremendously hard schedule coming in, up. In some ways, no one believes they're going to do anything in this game. In some ways, I I like the Giants' chances more if they would have lost. Oh, but the fact that they stop came back, beat that shitty Arizona they team, had the galvanizing moment. Uh, I love fading teams off of historic comebacks. I'll oh. even bring up the Eagles, the uh, historic comeback they had. Against the uh, Giants, the Miracle in the Meadowlands 2.0, they lost to um, Joe Webb as 14 point oh, home no. favorites. That's I know, I was at that <laughs> game. All right, they lost outright. So coming off a historic comeback, it is it just doesn't work out, especially on a short week on the road. To your point, Ryan, like it, you can't talk me into the Giants being involved in this game if Andrew Thomas is not playing. Like their He's line, their line is so thin. They they are just going to they're going to be like Patty C when we order Little Caesars. The Forty ers are going to fucking eat. Uh, Whoa! I just don't see how <laughs> Patty C <laughs> catching so many know, strays. But really, like, what is the the Giants' game plan to win this game? Okay, you got to pressure Brock Purdy. The Giants haven't gotten a sack this season. I understand it's going to regress. But that's to me is like a massive problem. I don't see this pass right, rush so developing. If you couldn't. If you couldn't pressure Josh Dobbs, I think you're gonna have trouble pressuring Brock Purdy. Uh, so now I've now consumed uh, way too much Giants content this week, and the consistent thing from all the film bros is it didn't make any sense. Mm. They either Wink is terrified of his inability to stop the run, or he he blitzed at an incredibly low rate, fifteen percent last week. Obviously, you know Wink is typically up yeah. in the thirty-five to forty percent range. I I think. It again, not going to be the conspiracy theorist here, but it's almost like they were looking past Arizona, and that's why they fell down and looked stupid. They were playing vanilla ass shit, which they obviously changed. Were they, were a lot they looking of that in the past the Cowboys? No, no, no. I and mean, I think that's the other version of this game, which is that the D line just makes it so they can't operate an offense. Yeah. Uh, that being said, it seems that as though uh, although the the majority of the bets are coming in on the Niners, that there has been some resistance in the marketplace <laughs> by some sharps. 
that prevented this from getting into the uh, Chiefs, Bears, or Cowboys, Cardinals range. So Daniel. obviously, this is a big number. It's a Thursday night. I do think specifically the Shanahan scheme also could give them. I mean, they could run for a million yards. They, I hate this matchup. I don't have a good reason. The, the reason that they, this team comes out and beats the Niners is this: they say they come out and say fuck it. They take shots. They run creative ass shit. They blow all the good plays on, for this Thursday night game. And the Niners' offensive line is vulnerable. And they're able. They act. Wink brings it. He brings some creative ass shit. Brandon Ayuk, game time decision. He doesn't play. Quote very fluid. That I mean, him not playing is a bigger deal than people uh, I think give it credit for. Well, and and if you listen to the prop show, I'm all over Ronnie Bell. I don't know if uh, the prices have changed, but oh man, I hope you got I think it already. We probably were ahead of the market on that. Stuff. It does seem like he is gonna like if he plays, he'll be nothing more than a decoy. And I'm wearing the jacket. I got the sunglasses on. I'm feeling good. And I, I got a feeling you didn't even bring up the fucking Dan Jones prime time. Oh no, I was, you just keep talking. Well, I, I I'm <laughs> filibustering. Like like He's that. one and 11 straight up five and seven though. ATS so that maybe, ends now. <laughs> maybe there's a chance uh, 49ers with Christian McCaffrey, 11 and four ATS. I, I took uh, on the uh, player prop show. I took under Purdy completions because I just think it's going to be a heavy dose of Christian McCaffrey. They're going to control the the game. They they're not going to need to throw a bunch because they're not going to be playing from behind. I think the Giants' path to victory is some of those Brock Purdy overthrows, which we saw last game, and which I thought we would be seeing more in game one. I, I think they got to convert on those and convert on big ways, like turnovers, putting them in plus territory, that kind of stuff. That's the only way I see them winning this game, maybe a big special teams play. I, I don't see them winning the game. I got to take a uh, 49ers land the 10 Are the 49ers in consideration for survivor. Oh, wow. Ryan did well, not so see this. You're so fucking confident over here. I am pretty confident. When were we supposed to, but now we already did this. Niners couldn't even cover last year, last week against the Rams. We already have Miami. And then we have Niners next week uh, against the Cardinals. All right, so I, I didn't. I don't. I'm I'm hesitant to change what we did on the I, episode, but we can save that for the end. Teams who were on the second game of a road trip, and both of those games were the Mountain and Pacific Time Zone. I saw this. Our sixteen nine and one ATS <laughs> okay. since 2017. You don't think that has something to do with some culture build, West Coast road trip with the boys? I will say. You mentioned uh, how Dan Jones not good in prime time. You know Brock Purdy's never lost in prime time, college or pro. That is crazy. Never lost. No way he loses this time. <laughs> I, 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 he, the Giants winning wouldn't be the worst thing because I truly do hate the 49ers. Oh, but I just you're gonna I, lay the ten though. Yeah, I'm laying the ten. All right, give me the give me the points. I'm not a square. I don't I don't take. I don't. I love how you I were. Don't lay you double. were acting like you were on the fence. Oh, you know. All right, <laughs> that last trend really won me over. I I do not lay. I don't like to lay ten points in the NFL, Sean. I, it's not my first year gambling. All right, I'm not like you, just <laughs> picking the best team to win the game. Seventy four percent of the bets on the stupid San Francisco 49ers. Everyone hates the Niners. It's not just you. It's not just you. They're, they Giants are have a long story annoying. history of beating the shit out of them in key moments uh, on their way to winning uh, big games like Super Bowls many times, <laughs> many many <laughs> times. Sorry, right, let's move over to Sunday. That that's enough of. The, although I will say, please please do yourself a favor. Bet the quarterbacks first touchdown in that game if you haven't already. All right, Sunday 10 a.m. early slate. Sean, we're dealing with another eight game. Oh, I'm sorry. No, nope, they want to fuck with us. Nine games, three late. And Luckily, and we got a nine TV NFL. But but I mean, what are we doing? God's yeah, and eye. Then, and then Ryan sets it on my bow flex weights. You know that's a nice setup. I don't. Yeah, but then it it stops me from just you move know. the fucking TV. I mean, the irony of you complaining of having to do something to go lift weights. Yes. Getting in, in the way. Of I don't want to have to lift something. That's ridiculous. To get to the stuff I have to lift. That's some wild ass shit right there. Chargers, another team on the second of a back to back road trip. They're heading to the spaceship. Minnesota coming off Thursday night. Little mini buy there. Chargers minus two. Well, on the look ahead, now they're catching one plus 105 on the money line. Minus 115 for the Vikings. 54 is the total. 
I, I found the nugget that I, that I threw up on the card here is an amazing one. Uh, tease God, Justin <laughs> Herbert, forty and ten all time, and tease. Yeah, you could say the all they do is lose close games, <laughs> I mean, or this is delightful, or just say all they do is cover teasers. And wow, now, forty and ten—that's <laughs> insane. And now they're the catching tease. a point. Perfect. We'll just uh, slot that into the teaser for later on. The slot. How's the slot? This Did game's been last thing, Sean. Sorry, this game's been smashed to the over. I think the total smash. opened closer to maybe 49, 50, and uh, it's been bet all the way up to fifty four, which is pretty pretty significant. We're not totals guys, but that's a lot of points. Obviously, a game to circle for your DFS contest. Uh, Sean, are you? Are you doing the thing? Because typically we're supposed to take the Chargers on the road here. Yeah, this is an all a delightful matchup between. I just wrote uh, for my note, somebody has to win. Well, it's <laughs> it's young Justin Herbert versus old Justin. Yeah, Herbert. this is like the master <laughs> meeting the uh, the young the young uh, <laughs> like I'm here to teach you, Karate Kid, how to be a guy who puts up good stats and doesn't win playoff games, chokes. This is a crazy stat. Herbert is nine, 14 and one ATS in toss up games in his career. Uh, basically games with the spread of three points or less, not good. <laughs> which sounds like an issue, except Kirk cousins is 24, 31 and one in those same scenarios. This is wow. Ne- neither one of these teams really want to win this game. Oh, this is another great one. This is the first time in 35 instances that a team has scored 50 plus points, not turn the ball over. Through uh, two weeks and still been zero and two. The the Chargers are historic at charging. The last three losses, they uh, the the two regular season, the one in the playoffs. Justin Herbert has had the ball with the chance to win, and he's just coming up short. Uh, to me, I think both their defenses are horrible. Chargers dead last in defensive yards per attempt at six point nine. Uh, the the Vikings defense. Hasn't looked great. I guess they held the the Bucks to twenty points that first game, but I test they're pretty rough. Uh, Austin Eckler is out. I guess I'm just gonna go with the home team here, although I I don't feel great about either side of this. It feels like either side you bet you're going to get screwed. Sean, in the last I mean, shout out to the database in the last twenty years, Kirk Cousins. You bet on Kirk Cousins ATS. He would have lost you the. <laughs> The second most amount of money out of the 217 qualifying quarterback. Yeah, I had Vikings at home since 2020. I uh, 10 and 17 ATS. Well, uh, in in those 20 years, can you guess who the quarterback who was less the only one quarterback in the National Football League was less profitable? It has to be Baker, right? Wasn't he up there? Tony Romo. (laughs) Oh, that's great. You're welcome. That's Another great. one, Cousins. Third. T- uh, this is now the fourth time he started zero and two in his career. The previous three times, he covered. Okay. Three. Yeah, I. This one is a real. If if someone has a great angle on this game, I haven't heard it yet because you could talk me into into either side of the either side. I I guess the Chargers are the more talented team, but I still say that that Vikings stadium is a tough place to go. And something is clearly off. I mean, Brandon Staley in his press conference, he was, he was not he, defensive. Have you ever seen someone get mad and you know, like they don't got that dog in them where they're trying to get mad and like kind of scare you. And you're like, dude, you're, you're soft. Like what's going on here. Uh, he was like, how do you think that and someone asked what the mood was in the uh, locker room, which is a dumb question to ask. He's like, these guys are playing their guts out. How do you think the mood is Derek? How do you think the mood is? It, wow. it was almost out of like my wife's uh, bachelor nation or something. How do you think my mood is Derek? I, I just don't see them going and getting a road win. I, I know we were taking them on the road. Fa- yeah, or, sorry. Taking them on the road, fading them at home. But that's usually when they were getting points. And I guess now technically they are, I mean, my initial point was them as a non-conference road favorite is bonkers. Um, but still I'm, I'm uh, going Vikings, but Sean, can I try to convince you otherwise? Sure. D- what, what do we think of Justin Herbert against the blitz? Um, I don't know. You're not supposed to, it, it, it's not, you're not, but they haven't been blitzing. Like if you saw, you're not supposed to blitz. Okay, Justin Herbert. What is Brian Flores definitely going to do? True, but Blitz. how do you beat the Vikings? Like all you do is run your running back. Like De- what they did against the the Eagles, they sat back in coverage and they forced the running back to beat him. And DeAndre Swift, being the dog that he was, a uh, Georgia dog, a DAWG, just went off and had an amazing game. 
I don't think Josh Kelly can do that, and I don't think Herbert has the patience to sit on those throws. Elijah Dotson. Yeah, I, I don't. I think he's going to, and I think he's been doing it for the past couple of years, throwing sh- way short of the sticks. I I actually think the like the concern that people have for this offense is they're playing a lot more conservative, and that is tailor made to a. Uh, to destroy the Vikings defense. Uh, Steffi Smalls in the YouTube chat. Shout out to Steffi. Check her show out on YouTube. Uh, she has game is going to overtime at plus eleven fifty. That is, I it, that has Chargers Vikings written all over it. If there was a way for this game to be a tie, and now maybe that's why you take the Chargers and the points. You, you know what that is? You're you're <laughs> at one of these like mixers, and they're bringing hors d'oeuvres around, and it's some basic ass shit. You're like, no, I don't need to eat that. But then they come by, and they're like, oh, this oh, is yeah. a, uh, a flame and wagyu oh, yeah. uh, You know, fucking wagyu scallop, dumplings, scallop uh, slider. It's like, oh wait, fu- all right, fuck it, I'll eat some meat. <laughs> So you're in on the Chargers, right? Oh, and that overtime bet. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm in on the Chargers, and obviously we're gonna look to that. That's teaser material. I mean, I, we, that stat is no joke. Yeah, forty no. and ten. If you are looking All to time. tease, getting them, and maybe this will get up to one and a half. So yeah, I, I, I do not disagree with that tease. Well, that's actually a great question. Which way do you think it's going to move? Well, I, I guess just since, it, the, since it started, I didn't see it at minus two, but. Well, that saw, was the look at. Okay, so yeah, I saw it at minus one. You know, moving from minus one to plus one is not a huge move, and I think it could get up to like plus one and a half, maybe. Yeah, I mean, right now the money Eckler being out to me was the deciding factor. It's fifty two forty eight for bet split. Uh, the, a little bit more of the money coming in on uh, on the Vikings, according to this blind open. Vi- a Chargers minus one has moved just the single point. So. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it, it bounces around a little bit. I have a feeling it's gonna it's gonna be one of those that closes like Vikings minus two and a half. All right. Next up, Tennessee heads to Cleveland. Uh, interesting spots here all around. Uh, a rare spot where we have to have the conversation is the Tennessee are the Tennessee Titans a public dog that might have some fleas. They're catching three and a half here. One forty five on the money line minus one seventy four. The Browns. 38 and a half is the total. We got some very low totals this week and worth noting that the, the number moved a point off the look ahead, probably just based on Nick, Nick Chubb. Chubb. Uh, furthermore, Cleveland coming off the Monday night, the kind of emotional yeah. uh, game. And now you, you look at week. their schedule, Tennessee. I mean, this is the ultimate sandwich spot. We were talking in the office ahead of time. Like, what do we call this when you play in a four week span, three of your divisional opponents, and then another random team. I mean, they, they already played Cincy and the Steelers. They have Baltimore uh, looking do, up to next week. So do we call it the pinky spot, Ryan? Oh, because what? think about your four fingers. Oh, wow. There's one finger that clearly doesn't belong with the oh, other wow. four. I mean, we're totally excluding the thumb. The pinky uh, that's a, is the, uh, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm putting, putting a, a human finger on a sandwich is fucked up, Sean. <laughs> I'm not uh, touching Deshaun Watson. And then you you sprink again, you sprinkle in the idea that the public's on Tennessee. This is very confusing. Yeah. I obviously I don't know if I don't know if I can really agree with the idea that Nick Chubb's worth a full point. I do think he looked amazing. It, the injury, if you if you haven't seen the still shots, no need. Uh, it's some cartoon shit. I, I can't imagine that. And this, if you remember, he did the same thing in college or something very similar with his knee. Uh, it getting really messed up. Well, but Brian, we also too just going back. I forgot to mention that the oh. uh, the Rams traded Cam Akers. Oh yeah, to the Vikings. Uh, does he play this week? No, no. I think I think it's too close. He knows to... the system, obviously. Kevin O'Connell and yeah, and Vegas, but that'll right? be interesting. I think Cam Akers. Um, well, I think the internet. I think Cam me- Akers might be an interesting fantasy pickup, uh, but we'll see. Maybe Madison goes off in his last game as a guy with a heavy workload. Well, I think the internet's memeing the Vikings because the only, uh, the only guy who's been more inefficient than Madison was cam Akers. So <laughs> I, I don't know if they're just swap that it's that Spider-Man meme. Where yeah. It's just like, Hey, uh, we're, we're going to stay the same. Yeah. Obviously the angle, like typically we would say, wow, you really got to look to laying the three and a half. I think in general, I, we're going to be tested on that rule this week with some of the, the situations. I have a really hard time taking this Cleveland team. I don't care how good Jerome form lo- Ford looked. Uh, Pierre Strong, a guy that we've been touting for a while, he looked good. They signed Kareem Hunt. I just have such a hard time not looking to Vrabel in the dog spot. And I understand it's gotten public. Obviously, we're seeing 
Uh, I'm not touching Deshaun Watson. We're seeing the the splits where to the tune of 73 percent of the bets on Tennessee. We know how good Vrabel is as an underdog. Twenty three yeah. nine and one uh, when the spread is greater than when three or more. It just so so I my, guess my my <laughs> instincts tell me it's Cleveland. And no. Deshaun Watson is I just can't do it. Deshaun Watson, I mean, Stefanski as a favorite is when you want to fade him. I know. Nine and nineteen against the spread is a favorite. Vrabel as a dog to me is is borderline autoplay. I think this Titans front seven is actually um pretty solid. The way you can beat the Titans is on the back end with elite passing. And I haven't seen anything close out of Deshaun Watson that tells you he is an elite passer. Uh, he got bailed out a couple times by his receivers, but Deshaun Watson's not good. He continues to turn the ball over. Titans' run defense is pretty good, so um, you know if Nick Chubb was playing, maybe that's a slightly different discussion. But they're going to be able to clamp down the run. They're going to say Deshaun Watson uh, beat us, and I don't think he's going to be able to. I think that this is really going to be a close game. I don't see how it's not. How could you not take three and a half when the total's sitting at thirty-eight and a half? Uh, the Browns' defense is is really good. I'm I'm nervous about uh, hashtag tighten up's no, ability to put up points. Could be tricky here, but I think I think losing Nick Chubb, the short week, the Ravens look ahead. I think we'll 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 put some uh, some it, doubt in the Browns. It very, I do think it's a tricky. I mean, Traylon Burke had some had some nice plays. Browns did struggle with picking, so maybe maybe Burks gets them a couple big plays. Did they struggle with him? He had one big play. I, like I don't so, know. Yeah, I guess I don't know if I would say he's str- like Ward is a guy who can shut someone down, and so you know D Hop maybe another tough week, sledding here. But uh, you know, well, I, and D Hop he was a little banged up last week. I think he's a little bit healthier. A couple nuggets again. Here. I'm not betting this because of Tennessee's offense. I'm betting Tennessee because of uh, Mike Vrabel because he's a much better coach than Stefanski because they, they, they show up as dogs and I'm looking to fade Deshaun Watson as a favorite. Showing up as dogs is a big one. And again, like just even double clicking closer Vrabel uh, after winning as a dog and then being a dog again, <laughs> nine and three ATS. You he's play in this a game dog every week. Uh, here's the scary part. You said the defense was good. This is how good they are. Um, I have a trivia question for you. How many times have the Browns faced a play in their defensive red zone this season. Ooh, well, that's interesting because I don't plays know. against in the red zone for the Browns defense. Zero. Okay, I they was have guess not zero. allowed the opposing team into the red zone to run a play. Obviously, the long touchdown by Pickens, but then you had the defense scoring. That's obviously very, very interesting, and I, you know that that's what's scary. Can Tennessee? Is, are they going to be able to move the ball? But you just got to lean back and know that Watson's going to give them a chance, just like they gave the Steelers a chance twice. So we'll be we'll be squares on this one, Sean. We'll take the public dog catching the three and a half. We're breaking all the rules in the book. We probably shouldn't put this one on the card. Really, I like this. Okay, I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be like you and poo poo one of your picks. I really would. I think I'd be like six and zero in locks if uh, if you weren't here uh, to get in the way. Or some would say you created the second lock. So who knows? Maybe it's four and zero either way. 10 a.m. next one. This is our. By, by the way, we got to start by saying flow chart alert. We need a flow chart sound effect. The Houston Texans, they're heading to Jacksonville, who, by the way, the Jags are on their way to London. A shout out to the graphics team with yes. the eyeball emoji, London. Game. And the uh, the Union Jack. Fuck London. Yeah. Fuck England. <laughs> USA all the way. Let's go. This game, uh, nine and a half. For the Jags, minus four ten on the money line. Texans plus three twenty. Forty four is the total. Still a bit of uh, injury concern on the Texans side, although they are getting healthier. Stroud apparently now uh, back to full go. He did look good operating the offense in garbage time. Yeah, Laramie Tunsil returning to practice is huge. Uh, we have the the nugget up on the screen, but. Jacksonville has never covered at home as a favorite with Trevor Lawrence <laughs> own for ATS. And it even goes further. He struggled ATS against bad teams. He's four and 10 against the spread versus teams under 500 straight up in his career. I, I just don't know. Um, this is just such a good spot for the Texans, whatever it is, they figure it out against the Jags. They've won 20 of their last 25 meetings. 
And I know what you're thinking. Oh, it's just because the Texans have always had such good teams. Like, no, they've been bad a lot of these years. This is just a classic. You can't overthink it. It's it's like the Jets beating the Bills, even when they had Zach Wilson. They figure out ways to win. You can't overthink it. Getting Laramie Tunsil back is huge. Ryan, I mentioned the uh, Ohio State nugget. Ohio State first round picks: Justin Fields, uh, Dwayne Haskin, Art Schilster, and C.J. Mm. Stroud are eight and forty straight up in their NFL careers. And I think a lot of those are Dwayne Haskins because <laughs> Stroud is zero. Fields is uh what is he at five? Yeah, all right. <laughs> five wins. So it's it's Dwayne Haskins with three or no, I don't know. We'll have to see what Dwayne Haskins and, and for those who are like, hey, the Jags are a different team now than they were before. Last year they lost to the Texans at home 13 to 6. Yeah. Bottom line. So I think flo- uh, AFC South, the flow chart is the strongest. The flow chart says very strongly Houston owns Jacksonville in Jacksonville. Uh, Jacksonville, I, I, it was on the graphic, but I believe Jacksonville, their only win in their last nine games was the last time they played. Um, and and if you if you look at just the road games or the home games for Jacksonville, Houston has won eight of the last nine of those as well. So I again, I don't know what they're doing to us here, Sean. Well, and, and C.J. Stroud. I mean, uh, leave the cans out for C.J. Stroud because he's the garbage man. Like whoa, he is, whoa, whoa, he's whoa, not whoa, afraid whoa, whoa. to pick up some garbage. You know what? Let's talk about it because yeah. I saw John Mechie, not a deep fake, catch a pass in a National Football League game. <laughs> when the they we- all were back, you know, the, the weapons are standing up. <laughs> you have Mechie, you have Tank Dell, you have Nico Collins, you have Robert Woods, you have oh, Dalton think, Schultz. I, this offense is going to eventually start doing stuff. What would be more on brand for this? Jacksonville Jaguars team that all of a sudden the, the Texans defense is picking off Trevor Lawrence <laughs> and things are getting spicy. I, I didn't actually look at this. Uh, I don't have this betting split noted down. So I wanted to, uh, all right. So Jags getting 60, 60%. So uh, of course, uh, pu- public darling, I think uh, Sean, w- we, we just said we were going to quit the Texans and here we are taking the Texans, no, but again. taking them catching nine and a half. It's a flow chart game. It, it counts. Yeah. Uh, and those for those uh, wondering, there are no close your eyes specials this week. Unfortunately, it's two and zero on the season. Great start. Let's continue. Ten a.m. on the West Coast. We got a good old fashioned rivalry. Very one sided. It's Pats a baby fucking wheel, man. Head to uh, MetLife Stadium to take on the Jets. The Jets are catching three plus one twenty on the money line. Minus one forty for the Pats. Thirty six and a half <laughs> is the total NFL game here. I do not understand the case for the Jets here. Why is it only three? It, it's tough, I guess, because the Pats are zero and two. But it w- Mac w- Jones four and zero ATS against the Jets. It, yeah, and and I'm looking to so um, uh, in general, I am looking to fade teams that had two home games that are a favorite or that are a small dog. You know, basically that they're overvalued. But I, I don't even know if this is the case here. And, and just kind of taking that aside. This to me is the, this is like a divisional flow chart on steroids. Yeah. Belichick just doesn't lose to the Jets. Patriots have won 35 out of their last 41 games. So if you're getting minus three, I mean that's real close to as long as it doesn't go over three and a half. How can you how can you not take the Patriots here? I think you know it, it's going to be tough sledding for their offense, but I think maybe Ramondre uh, gets going a little bit. But listen to the Zach Wilson uh, versus uh, Bill Belichick. Through four games against Belichick, he's fifty-four out of one hundred six, six ninety-three yards, two touchdowns, seven interceptions. He's taken nine sacks. He's lost these three games: twenty-five to six, fifty-four to thirteen, twenty-two to seventeen, and ten to three. Uh, Bill Belichick has Zach Wilson figure right. it out. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so uh, I said 4 and 0 versus the Jets, 4 and 0 versus Mac or uh, Zach Wilson ATS. Yeah. But al- also uh without Tom Brady, Belichick in divisional games, 3 and 11 ATS versus the Bills and Dolphins, but 5 and 0 or 5 and 1 ATS versus <laughs> the Jets. He's just never going to lose to the Jets. It, he hates the Jets and the Browns. Yes. It's it that's the ultimate flow chart. Is Belichick motivated when those two Franchises come to town, especially you know much how much he must hate all the attention the Jets are getting. Haven't been good in decades, <laughs> and and they're and they're gallivanting around talking about this team as a Super Bowl contender. Oh, a lot of agreement, Sean, this week. Yeah, is that concerning, or are you feeling good about that? No, I'm feeling good. I, I like my picks. Feeling good, and then and like by that. 
blinders well, on. Well, come on. I'm not going to let uh, outside forces get involved. Hey, I Kramer. Yeah, I, so I was just going to say, I don't think we've discussed the lock yet. Um, uh, we'll see. I okay. think I, new England, not, to for me, me, not for me, new England to me. I might be getting my keys out because just Belichick against <laughs> the jets. It is lock city. Hey, you know what is lock city when it comes to getting great game tickets, lowest price guaranteed last minute game time. If you haven't signed up with the game time account using the promo code SGPN, first off, what are you doing? You get $20 off your first purchase. We're talking football, college football, pro football, even concerts, comedy, theater, more. Like, what are you doing this week? Go out, see the world, catch a show, go to a game, live a little bit. The sweat at a, uh, I, I'm one who enjoys watching games at home, but really, you got to go out and catch a couple games live. The tailgate experience, getting in that stadium, it, you cannot beat it. Highly, highly recommend using the Game Time app because, again, uh, if you find tickets in the same section in a row for less, you won't. Don't even try. Game Time will credit you 110 percent of the difference. They're not offering that. They're not. They're not paying that out, right? They're offering that because they know you can't beat them, baby. GameTime.co or just download the GameTime app. Use a promo code SGPN. If you're watching on YouTube, our boy Takeo spikes with an obstructed view. That wouldn't happen on Game Time. Buffalo Bills, get your tickets on Game Time. You get a picture of the tickets you're buying. What are you waiting for? GameTime.co or download the Game Time app. Promo code SGPN. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. Sean, you remember that epic uh, finals between the Warriors and the Cavs? Warriors won f- four, to, four to two. That was in 2015. Same year that had the last time the Jets beat the Patriots. <laughs> that's a while long ago. time ago. Really long. I mean, that's that's so, like so what, middle age LeBron. Uh, and the Jets, I get it. They have a chip on their shoulder. They get some turnovers, but man, no. that offense is rough. No, I mean, and, I and the Patriots' it. offense is pretty boring. But I think they'll be able to do enough. Oh, I think you nailed though the the key. I think a it's gonna but, be a seventeen ten game. You're not gonna want to watch this game. That's why I'm hesitant of putting it in my locks because I'll be dialed in on it. But <laughs> Billy Belichick isn't gonna be uh, isn't gonna be using that. Uh, easy in the chat saying use game time for my UVA JMU tickets last week and Brave tickets. Highly recommend. Oh wow! Thank you, Easy. Appreciate the shout out. As always, Easy uh, Easy for the win. Uh, Sean, I, I mean, it, it just, you nailed it at the very top. Bill Belichick just can, he's, he tortures this kid. <laughs> it's and cruel. I, I certainly don't think so. It's and, any- and this is why I, I didn't, I, I did have uh I did make the jets, the division winner because I was just, I, I huh. liked the idea of them winning the division and then collapsing in the first game of the playoffs. I thought that was a very tragic jetsy and ending. But it also, at least, it made the Jets team more interesting with Aaron Rodgers. Now, I, it just feels like it's a more boring season without Aaron Rodgers. Love him or hate him, he at least made these matchups a little bit more interesting because their defense is really good, and they have, they do have Sauce Gardner, they do have Garrett Wilson, they do have Brees Hall. Looks pretty good. Yeah, looking uh, looking at our division or our NFL preview stuff. Uh, I don't know. That that might be the yeah. Your your Jets takes not looking great. Unfortunately, it's all well, right. Come on, you got a, you got an asterisk. Yeah, I, I mean, know I'm everyone's not... throwing asterisks out now, Sean. You can void. throw your own. You can throw your own. I want to go through the season long predictions and void stuff because of injury or all right. stuff that happened that I didn't predict. I, I can't. I, for now, you're, you're you're taking even money. You're talking about not going for it on fourth down. You're you're talking about voiding bets. 10 a.m. on the West Coast. Got a Saints Packers matchup here in Lambeau. Packers laying two, minus one thirty on the money line, plus one ten for the Saints. Forty two is the total. Saints on a back to back road spot here, coming off the Monday night game, so also short rest. Meanwhile, Packers, a little bit of a look ahead spot here. They have Thursday night football against Detroit on deck. Uh, it's now obviously people have distilled out the box score. They understand how badly the Packers were dominated by the Atlanta Falcons to the tune of 200 yards, uh, all sorts of ra- uh, random variants that allowed the Packers appear to appear to play a close game here. And you have on the other side, a saints team that are they, the NFC's Tennessee Titans. I kind of <laughs> feel like we have to, we, I think we have a little in, in her- at least for me, I have some, um, 
so a little bit of bias where I seem to always hate the Saints. And so I wonder if I need to look at them through the lens of if Mike Vrabel was coaching this team, would I like them more? Well, first of all, Mike Vrabel would be starting Jameis Winston. Yeah, and, he wouldn't be keeping him in jail. Mike Vrabel is not Dennis Allen. Allen is much I, worse. He's coached seven career games on short rests. His teams are one and six straight up, two and five against the spread. You mentioned the Packers, who played a very competitive game, should have won uh, that game what? against the Falcons. You didn't listen to me. No, I listened to you. I I just disagreed. I thought Desmond Ritter. They dropped a bunch of Desmond Ritter uh, interceptions As that they the should Falcons, have. Had. Pick sixes. Uh, David Bakhtiari has decided he's only going to play on grass, so he'll be back most mm. likely. Um, Watson and Aaron Jones look to be a little bit more healthy. We'll see who plays there. I jo- think one of them is a go. Jones I don't didn't know which practice ones. today. Yeah. So uh, Watson did. For what it's worth, yeah, he did some like light work. So we're taping this Wednesday night. I'm gonna predict one of those guys plays, um, and, and I understand the look ahead towards the Thursday game, but they're coming off a loss. Matt Lafleur is very good ATS off a loss, twelve and three, and yeah, the Saints are pretty banged up. Jamal Williams, he's out. Kamara is still out. Kendry Miller is a rookie coming back, but he's dealing with the hamstring. He's, not, so, he's full go. Update, okay, but I'm update. saying he. He he's he's making his first NFL game coming off of injury. I think that's going to be tough. I just thought Derek Carr looked pretty rough. Ball placement, uh, moving the ball around. Now Jordan Love didn't look amazing on the road. I was going to say, but he's you know three touchdowns, zero interceptions, back to back games, and also this is the Packers' first home game. So I think that's inherently. I think teams that looked pretty good on two road games and now coming back home, I think inherently there's going to be some value there. So I do like uh, Packers uh, minus two. I, you know, I do think the saints, I think the saints run defense is weaker than it's past defense, but I do think that, and I think you're right to, to cite that Dennis Allen is not Mike Brabel and he is He's not a very good coach. He hasn't been been very good. I think he was. I think we even cited last week. He had the worst ATS record of of all yeah. coaches with a certain amount of games coached. I mean, to me, they 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 gr- grinded out an ugly win against Tennessee. I think hats off to them for that. But that was off of uh, Tannehill. I mean, you can make a case <laughs> they should have. They they intercepted Tannehill three times and only won by uh, what was it one or two points. And then you play Bryce Young, who clearly needs a lot of work before he's a finished product in the NFL. I I don't think they I don't think they've really been sure in fire a tough number spot. one pick Bryce Young. Yeah, I, he doesn't look like a quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> All right. Does he? Uh, I mean. Uh, as someone who wasn't a big Anthony Richardson fan, he looks more like an NFL quarterback than Bryce. Dude, Anthony Richardson, I, I get he not, got knocked out with that concussion and got knocked out on one of the last plays of the other game, but he's moving around like a big guy, making plays, making throws. I would much rather have Anthony Richardson than Bryce Young a million times right now. Uh, small sample size. We've seen two games. Uh, yeah, I mean, so much of this handicap, I think, comes down to the injuries. Even uh, did you mention Lucas Van Ness was limited in practice as well? Uh, no, and then they they the the Packers guard Elgo Elgo Jenkins, he's out. That hurts. But I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I I think a, it's a Taysom Hill anytime touchdown because they don't have any <laughs> running backs, and that's about it. Yeah, it. It's, I I don't think Carr looked good in either games. No, no, it, I it, think they're. I don't I'm looking to fade teams that I think are fortunate to be two and zero, and Carol and New Orleans is one of them. Yeah, and I think even the spread here is curious, right? Because it's it's two, it's the classic like dome dome team. I, I do know that uh, New Orleans has been better on the road of late. They're not quite that crazy good home team, uh, horrible on the road. But I, I, the defense does enough to get it done in every game. And what do we keep hearing about this offense for for Derek Carr? They're they're able to drive up and down the field, but when they get into the red zone, they're not able to do anything. They have the worst uh, conversion rate when once you get into the yeah. red zone on the season. So, is that trash or is that regression coming? So I I kind of I I don't know if I like Green Bay in this spot if Aaron Jones isn't playing. I thought their offense was was quite stale and although they had a couple drives and again, they were aided by, by pass interference. And unless you think this Atlanta defense is elite, I don't know if that was the most impressive thing. And I think a lot of that was 
maybe Watson. We haven't seen him yet, but definitely Aaron Jones. And I guess we have to wait and see. But I'll take the Saints until I until first home I, game for for Green Bay. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, I, yeah, I'm just not as I, I like that I have a Green Bay to win the division <laughs> position. I just don't know uh, if they're going to get it done. The, New Orleans is a team that comes to fight every week. 10 a.m. on the West Coast. Denver heads to Miami. Uh, in the preseason, we thought that Denver would be two and zero, oh and Miami <laughs> might be zero oh and two, and this would be an interesting spot to. And you, and you shouldn't grab the three three and a half that was available back then. Well, now Miami is laying six minus two sixty on the money line. Denver plus two twenty forty eight is the total. Miami catching eighty four percent of the bets. Uh, also looking ahead to a game against division rival Buffalo Bills. Oh, what do we do here, Sean? What do we Vic Fangio revenge spot? I mean, yeah, we, the, I can the, keep the going. Fangio revenge spot, uh, man, it is really tough to talk yourself into the Denver Broncos. I think if you, t- if you're betting the Broncos, you're saying, Hey, Sean Payton, you know, uh, against the spread as a dog, he's right there with um, Tomlin and, and uh, you know, Mike Vrabel. So you're talking yourself into that. You're talking yourself into the idea of, Oh, they were up big against Washington just kind of blew that game. Uh, but this is the Dolphins team. This is their first home game. Uh, they're going to, uh, I mean, Sam Howell put up 35 against his Broncos team. I think two and Tyreek are going to have a day. I, to, to me, that is one of the one of the things I was most wrong about preseason or just start of the season was that I thought the Broncos defense was pretty good. Now whatever they're doing there, they're just getting carved up. Uh, Miami's offense best in the league in yards per play, seven point three. I just. I, I just don't understand a scenario where the the Broncos are really slowing them down. And obviously, there's a dynamic between Russell Wilson and Sean Payton. I mean, Sean Payton saying, "Hey, if we have to slap a play card on him, I'm going to do it." Uh, that to me doesn't instill a lot of confidence. This Dolphin team is fast. They're loose. They're high as shit. We, we did yeah, ask the question. We we asked the question in the preseason. What if Sean Payton doesn't have it anymore? Real quick. Update because I think we were pretty at by after two games last year, we were pretty down on Nathaniel Hackett. Yeah. Well, let's compare the two. Uh, after two games, Nathaniel Hackett one and one straight up, Sean Payton 0 oh and 2. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. They're both 0 oh and 2 ATS. Uh, Sean Payton, well, he he's an offensive guy, so he certainly had more yards. Uh, 659 to Nathaniel Hackett 783. Uh oh. No, I, I want to see. Oh, wait, wait. No, but at points, he'll be fine. Uh, 49 to 52 Peyton as compared to 32 to 36 for Hackett. So uh, Russell he Wilson, ruined the defense. That's all Ru- I can Russell find. Wilson is a cancer that is destroyed this Denver Broncos team. You go, it's like, oh, hey, I have knee cancer. How can that affect your lungs? Because it spreads. Russell Wilson is killing this team. I want to take you gotta get the chemo, get the knife, get him out. Put Jared Stidham in and see. That's the only way you save this Broncos season. I, I'm just so out on Russ. I know he had those couple deep balls to Marvin Mims. I just, man, you cannot pay me to bet on Denver. I mean, Vic Fangio revenge spot. Yeah, too. that's the last thing. What, what are, how are, who? This is chalky, right? Like, what are we doing? Are we supposed to take the very public side? Can yeah. I give you a trend? Sure. That will really even just hammer this home. You knew you know I love a good time zone trend. Okay. Tua 18, 7 and 1 ATS in the oh, Eastern time look out. So Let's go. Let's I I don't understand how you take Denver. <laughs> I, I really I truly don't understand. It makes me wonder if they're watching the games. A very public they're side. They're not. Though. We're we now are on two very public sides. We have to we have to be careful. 10 a.m. Another one. Uh, what this is game uh seven of nine. Buffalo, speaking of public sides, again, we just mentioned them. They're looking ahead to Miami just as well. They're heading to our nation's capital. Well, not really. Colby will point out it's actually all the way the fuck out in Maryland. Um, shout out to FedEx Field. Easiest field to get in and out of of the entire National Football League. The Commanders catching six and a half at home here, plus two thirty on the money line, minus two eighty five for the Bills, forty four and a half is the total. It actually ticked up a half point from the look ahead, which is interesting considering how Good Washington looked, perhaps commentary about how bad everyone thinks Denver is. Yeah. Buffalo comes home and dominates in what obviously looks like an obvious good spot for them. 
now everyone betting on them as they head uh, on the road against a team that's going to have a stout defensive line, going to make it difficult for them. And I, I absolutely think they're going to cause Josh Allen to do some Josh Allen things. So for me, it comes to Sam Howell, and do we trust them to do something on the offensive side? Boy, I liked what I saw to Brian Robinson last week. Yeah, I think Terry McLaurin's only a week healthier. An- another like very fucking obvious spot here to me. I'm on the Commanders. I I don't know how. And Brian Dable, by the way, still not back in Buffalo. So, uh, <laughs> I oh yeah, like that offense was humming oh, oh, against Arizona. And sorry, last thing before uh, I allow you to speak, Sean. Sure, thank you. Uh, Demar Hamlin, back to back healthy scratches. Rut row. Oh, okay. Well, wait till they come back. Player of the year price is coming down <laughs> closer to, to even money. Oh, it's it's a great row. time to hop in on Demar Hamlin. Wait until <laughs> one person gets injured in the in the Bills secondary or that Cincinnati game where they're going to have an electric moment that the nation is going to tune into, uh, celebrating Demar Hamlin. Uh, are you Again, getting, Demar Hamlin died? Are you at least a little nervous about your minus one thousand? No, because I I yeah. locked it in at like two eighty. Okay, it's come down to like minus one forty now. Yeah, I would. I like it at minus. You gonna buy more? I I might do that. Okay. Now, normally, I'm saying it's a good time to fade two and zero frauds, and I do think in some ways, the Commanders are a bit fraudulent. But and the Bills sixteen and six against the spread as road favorites. This is kind of the Bills' spots. I'm worried about if I take the Commanders. I'm worried about Gabe Davis, Stephon Diggs, Marvin Mims had. Two catches for 130 yards against this Commanders defense. Now, and the Cardinals played them really tough as well. Like they were winning that game into the third quarter. Cardinals might be better than we thought. <laughs> You're just saying that because they they were kicking your br- giant's ass might twenty be, to nothing. That might be a little bit better than we thought. Did you did you read the uh, trend we had up on the screen? But uh, last throw, five years, throw teams, back up there. Teams playing in Denver are 24 and 10 ATS in their next game. Yeah, you get. My dad always says you get used to that elevation. You come down to sea level, you're feeling great. Yeah. I think this Washington team, as much as I was kind of down on them, thought it was a transition year. I do think they they bring some physicality here. And uh, Josh Allen, he didn't turn the ball over. He did. He actually did turn it over, but then it got a there was a penalty, got overturned. So I, I'm taking. A, I don't think they're quite. To the non conference six and a half point road favorite against an okay team. And I do think this Washington team is okay. So I'll take the Commanders plus six and a half. The enemy does have a ton of experience going against this Buffalo Bills team. Okay, yeah, good point. And, and I think there there's some knowledge to be had there, specifically knowing how to go against McDermott's defense. And I think having the, the I mean, this is this is a Chiefs team that routinely uh, was putting up some big numbers, even in losses against that defense. So I, I do have some faith that they're going to be able to move the ball. And I think most importantly with Josh Allen, you just got to let him make the mistakes. And obviously he's already talking. He, he himself is overtly discussing his own mistakes, yeah. which means he's, he's thinking his about head. his mistakes, which means I, I, yeah, I, mean, I think, I think Washington's going to give teams that can't really run the ball trouble uh, with what they're going to be able to do on the back end with their defensive line. So I, I, th- this uh, as much as I hate to say it, Sean, this has this has some potential to be mentioned later in the show. Oh, game eight of nine in the early window. My Atlanta Falcons. They're heading to Detroit for another beautiful game in a indoor arena, beautiful Ford Field there in Detroit. The Lions, the, Sean. This is a big, big move because the Falcons were so dominant last week. The Lions look ahead has come down from five and a half to all the way to three and a half here. Minus 175 on the money line. Falcons plus 145. 46 and a half is the total. I I think that the Lions are already starting to turn into a pumpkin. And oh, 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 oh. give me some of that pumpkin pie. Lions off a loss against a fraudulent Falcons team, a team that went. Two and zero, no business being two and zero. Uh, Desmond Ritter lucky to have only thrown one interception in that Green Bay game. Desmond Ritter, he is a classic home road guy. Desmond Ritter, this is a crazy stat: undefeated at home in college in the pros. Twenty six and zero straight up in college. Four and zero straight up in the NFL. You're taking this Falcons team on the road after the Lions lost the game. Now the Lions. They are banged up, but a lot of that is in the secondary. I don't think the Lions, 
I don't think you're they're going to be able to exploit the Lions and and throw on them. And there was a ton of opportunities for Jordan Love and the Packers to throw on that Falcons team. He missed some open guys. I have no faith in in Desmond Ritter's ability to throw the ball. They're going to load the box. Now, the way this Falcons game gets home is that Bijan Robinson did look explosive. I think he's going to oh, be a so fun, explosive. I think he's going to be a fun DFS play, but you lay the three and a half all day with this Detroit Lions team. This isn't even a question for me. There are a couple of plays where Drake London uh, made Jair Alexander look a little silly, and Desmond Ritter hit him with an NFL throw. I'm I'm completely with you. He still makes a boneheaded decision, and too often he's allowing that decision to be potentially critical. Yeah. That being said. I think the Green Bay Packers have a very good passing defense, and some of those plays that he was able to convert, I think, matter. And you can't ignore the fact that what Bijan and Algier and maybe even Cordero Patterson add are going to make it even easier for him to pass. It's going to be a lot of play action. I obviously I'm in on this. I wish we were, I think, uh, debating this in the office on Sunday that like there's still going to be value on this Atlanta team because of the Green Bay result. Obviously, other fellow sharps like me got down on this quickly, drove the number down to three and a well, half. I think it's, I think it's the injury stuff. Uh, there's a lot of guys on the line side that are banged and, up and, and that's, but you have like, sometimes teams like one team is just fucking healthy and one team isn't. And the Falcons are really fucking healthy right now. And the lions just aren't. And maybe that's going to be the story because they just fucked up Barry Sanders day. Now they're banged up. Nah. Who knows, Sean, they it's started bad, off like take. shit. They started off like shit last year too. And at the end of the day, can I ask you a question? But they didn't start off like shit. They beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, they lost, but and then they come <laughs> home and they they ruin the win by losing to the Seahawks as home as a six point favorite. Yeah, I, they shouldn't be six point favorites, but I, I guess so they, they're good one Seattle and one team. either. I, I, are are they a good Seattle team? Now, let me I, ask you a question. Uh, yeah, how many times has Jared Goff and this Lions team been favored by more than a field goal? Now he's been on the team now for a couple of years. Uh, probably not that many. Three times before this. Yes. One and two ATS in those games. How many road? How many road NFL games has Desmond Ritter won? That's not relevant here. It's <laughs> a good point. He's making but his first road NFL start. Give me the points. They're going to run the rock. They're going to do the play. I know they're going to run the rock, and so do the Lions. You, you, and the rest of the world can continue to to throw oh, shade. Dude, there's at a plenty Atlanta of people Falcons. on the uh, on oh, the Falcons. I feel so fucking smart. All these smart people now. Look how creative this running game is. Twelve personnel. This. Oh, the, you were the same motherfucker that said Bijan Robinson in the first round is fucking stupid. Draft capital. This. Draft capital. That. Fuck off, get off my bandwagon. There's no room for you, <laughs> nerds. Get the fuck out of here. Nerd! Run the damn oh, ball. Kyle Pitts really paying off. He's getting out snapped by Johnny Smith. Oh yeah. Look at Oh, youtube.com slash sports gaming podcast show off a sweet uh Bijan highlight. It almost looks like a video game. Yeah, no, he's he's good. I but guess. But he's on the team, Sean. This is like your draft capital thing. You're kind of with the nerds here. You're holding that against them. All right. But, but yeah, so obviously I'm in Atlanta once again. Just no, I I'm holding their quarterback against him. So I think you, he's you're going, not willing to admit that he made some really nice throws in that game. I don't think he played that well. Got no. it. Watching it, no. Wow. Okay. All right. I don't. I don't I, think so. I think now you're he's being going stubborn. on the road. I think you're being stubborn. Okay, he looked awesome. No, no. Wait, wait, if he plays well in this game, will you give him credit? Yeah, if he okay. goes out and gets a, a big win against the Lions on the road, I'll give him credit. I wouldn't. Cons- I'm not going to consider it a big win because I don't think the Lions are that good. But I will say a road win will help shut up critics like you. Last of the first early slate. Game. Last, oh yeah, first. Everyone's got a first. Last of the early slate. Colts. Another back-to-back road spot here. They're taking on the Ravens, who much like their division rivals the. Browns are in a similar, t- similar type of sandwich spot where they have four weeks, uh, three division games and the Colts as the non-division game. That's a terrifying sandwich spot. Minus seven and a half for the Ravens minus three forty on the money line Colts plus two seventy. Forty-six 46 is the total. This is tough. Cause I feel like I don't want any part of either of these teams like Minshew. I know looked okay. Filling in uh, and the Texans, but I think you, you, <laughs> you give, you give Minshew a nice head start and he can look okay, but he's one in 10 straight up in his last 11 starts. Uh, not very one in nine ATS. And that was playing on a good Eagles team for two of those games. Yeah. But then on the other side, the Ravens just aren't really great. 
as big favorites. They did cover week one against the Texans, but kind of historically, um, they just aren't that good uh, against big favorites. I don't think Anthony. I'm I'm grading Anthony Richardson as out. Um, you know the Colts cornerbacks, the outside cornerbacks are susceptible, so maybe it's a good Zay Flowers stack. But oh, interesting. It, this just this is tough because the the Ravens could take the foot off the gas, looking ahead towards the division game. But who is ha, what do you like about the Colts? Like the, what was interesting about the Colts is Anthony Richardson running all over the place, creating explosive plays. You bring in the statue Gardner Minshew, I think it. It, neg- it neglects a lot of things that were kind of working for the Colts offense. I uh, completely agree with that. The argument would be, well, one of the areas they're having the cluster injuries is at DB Minshew's going to be op- operating the passing game a little bit better. Obviously they're going to have to adjust some things, having the familiarity between Shane Steichen and, and Gardner Steichen. Minshew. Steichen helps. Yeah. You got you, you keep, co- you're McCaffrey, like my dad, McCa- <laughs> Shane Steichen. No, you said it wrong. I'm saying like stake him. Steichen. Steichen. If there's an E in there. Take I'm just the not going to say his name anymore. Okay. The offensive coordinator who obviously did uh, made Jalen Hurts who he is and not there anymore. <laughs> but he was 0 and 2 and 0 and 2 ATS with Shane Steichen and that oh. Eagles offense last year. Now I'm confused. He looked really uh, bad against the Saints. I, I I don't want either part of this. I don't want either part of this. I'll take I'll take the free points, but I I I'm not. No, I, I think I think you can lay it safely. Yeah, I think I'll, we're I'll I think we're getting near the Lamar explosion. My Lamar one seed, Lamar AFC, like the, this Ravens team looks like they could be good, Sean. They're not like Lamar is not fully locked in, and they're still getting the job done. Uh, when Lamar it all, not diving on that fumble really had me out on the Ravens. When it all clicks, it's gonna click. And to your point, I think everything I said about Gardner Minshew works if you believe that Gardner Minshew is any good at football. I just don't. I don't know think if, he is. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't know if he's and very he's good. And he's on the road. Like I need him as a home dog against. Eh, I, man, I honestly don't know what to make of this game. I'll I'll go with you on the Ravens because I could. I, Do you either think, way, I, mean, I feel like I'm screwed. Well, I mean, the number, the look ahead was eight and a half. It came down to seven and a half. So, do you think Gardner Minshew is a point worse? Like, okay. You, so then, you know what? I'm back on the Colts because if the line movement's going down, I want to go. I want to go opposite. Well, no, I just that's what that would be. That was the Anthony Richardson adjustment to Gardner yeah. Minshew. No, I'm point. I'm taking Colts. All right, I'll you're, take, you're the, probably, I'll take the key number. You're probably on the sharper side here. Hey, you know what is sharp? Uh, signing up for Underdog Fantasy using the promo code SGPN. Not only do you get a hundred percent deposit bonus, but every week they are giving out a hundred K, aka a hundred K Sunday. This week it is Tyreek Hill. All you got to do is pick uh, higher or lower on Tyree Kill's receiving yards. I think it's set at 91 and a half. Obviously, it's going up and down as the week goes along. And then, you know, to put that together with a couple of your favorite higher or lowers. We gave out some fun higher or lowers for um, for the Thursday night. We'll be giving out more for Sunday's slate, Monday's slate. Uh, why not just toss it in there? And you get the 100% deposit match up to $100 when you use the promo code SGPN. Underdog pickums have been super fun. Kramer just hit. Uh, if you go five for five, you hit a twenty x. I mean, that's it's a pretty fun way. And they also have college football and live, uh, higher lower. So let's say you're a little off on some of your early stuff. This is a fun thing to get in game. Underdog fantasy promo code SGP and get the hundred percent deposit bonus. Just catching up in the chat. It seems like D Bettis is on uh, continuing with his negative uh, ways. I did enjoy real last thing about the Colts uh, Ravens. I did enjoy how you ruled AR out, um, AR fifteen out. He did. I think the team announced it. Okay, but I like how you announced it. Yeah, we also should mention. I also that, ruled out yeah. Saquon Barkley <laughs> no, like, uh, day before he was ruled out. Well, in this case, it was after. But I, I was just confirming the news. Okay, uh, multiple offensive linemen also not practicing for both teams. Ryan Kelly, obviously, Quentin. Well, Nelson. and that's the other thing. Like the 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 Ravens are banged up a bunch. If anyone's gonna backdoor on the road, yeah. Yeah, he's one of those guys who will get penetration. God knows what happens in that Gardner Minshew van on the road. Yeah, I think there's going to be some opportunities for Lamar to make a statement. This could be one of those. No, statements. maybe this is uh, Lamar. 
Maybe this is Lamar's uh, MVP game. I, I will say though, I did like we. Well, I think something we maybe need to add to the sheet is like a uh, a medical symbol for teams that are really injured. The Ravens would qualify, so that that's the most concerning thing. But I I think a lot of the injuries I'm not over, overly concerned about. Hopefully, uh, it sounds like Ronnie Stanley uh, gonna play. I don't know about Linderbaum. Yeah, and we're back. Carolina, <laughs> we're heading to the afternoon slate. Like, were you in your own weird. little world there? No, I was just transitioning to myself. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's like Derek just directing the show. 105 p.m. on the West Coast. The Carolina Panthers. Uh, for those who didn't see the Veasan show last week, Derek, uh, while Sean was mid conversation with our other guest, raised his hand to let him know that he would be ready <laughs> to ha- comment on what you were discussing. Yeah, I mean the Veasan show has been going awesome, but you you have to tune in, Derek. At uh, nine o'clock, if you know Derek or have hung out with him, man enjoys a cocktail yeah. much like we all do. Tune into that. That he's he's kind of got a uh, working an open Highly guest re- spot there. Highly recommend. It's a fun way to kick off the show. It's a it's an amazing way to kick off the show. So we have the Carolina Panthers coming off that Monday night uh, push. Lame. They're heading to the Pacific Northwest to take on the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks minus six, minus two thirty on the money line, plus one ninety for the Panthers. Forty two is the total. Another kind of quarterback related uh, adjustment from the look at here, a point and a half. I have to imagine just based on how bad Bryce Young uh, and the Panthers suck. Bryce Young also not practicing. Which, what was what's that all about? Let me pull. Is that up. because he's sad? Did you? Uh, how am I the only person? I get there were two Monday night Ankle games on. Did not practice. And and it was kind of getting lost in the shuffle. But how am I the only one that brought up that like they it. I don't know if they benched him, but they randomly brought in Andy Dalton for like a key uh, third and eight. Well, he's a vet; he knows what he's doing. Eighty-four <laughs> uh, percent of the money in on Seattle, and uh, and the money's right to me. I can see how you get cute and talk yourself whoa. into the Panthers because oh, hey, the Panthers have played some tough defenses. They're going up against Seattle. First off, that's a massive road trip on a short week with a quarterback who's completely. Uh, outmatched and and their offense just seems Adam put it this way Adam Thielen is the best part of their offense that's not good and you're gonna take them only getting six 31st in offensive yards per play at four point one um it looks like J C Horns he's on the IR he's gonna be out for a yeah. while now on the other side Seahawks are pretty banged up it doesn't seem like the tackles will play although DK Metcalf he's gonna play um it's kind of a shit show as, as to who's gonna play for the Seahawks. But I br- listen to this nugget. Panthers rookie quarterback Bryce Young is averaging just 4.2 yards per pass attempt, third lowest ever for a quarterback after two games and 50 plus passes, behind Billy Joe Tolliver at 4.0 and Kyle Bowler at 3.8. So you can make all the excuses you want for him and say, oh, he, j- he needs better players around him. They need to call better plays. He needs to grow six inches. Whatever the excuses you want to make for Bryce Young, okay, fine. But historically bad yards per attempt is not something that you need when you're taking a road trip up to Seattle. I understand the public's going to be on it. Hey, the public is right some of the time, okay? The public wasn't right some of the time. We wouldn't have sports books. People would be losing all the time. The public needs to win, damn it. They're going to win with the Seahawks. The. So let's let's turn on the X Files music. So maybe Brian Burns creates some, uh, and I don't like Gino as a favorite. I don't like D- Pete Carroll as a favorite. Gino, but uh, have you watched Bryce Young? This is the ultimate. Well, have you watched the fucking game, Sean? We discussed this. We did a whole episode breaking down some futures markets on um, the rookie quarterbacks that included who will be the first quarterback to be benched. Now, while we know uh, at least some people are discussing the. You know Frank Reich and and his his uh, his offense. Yeah, I I do it's think. Dog shit. Well, what if what you don't want? Adam wanna, Thielen you, is their offense. Well, you don't want to. We we discussed the benching market and the whole case for Bryce Young. Well, all of these guys. Yeah, does that count? Because it's not going to be a benching. And so, what better way to to g- give him a breather? Get Andy Dalton, the true professional, in there, and maybe they're going to pull something little, like this with last an injury minute. thing. And I don't know, you know, the Gardner Minshew. It's like okay, that Gardner Minshew can operate an offense, you know, last minute if he has to come in, perfect for a backup to a guy who's going to run the ball a lot. Well, 
In this case, Andy Dalton is there almost to be a player coach. And I do think that Andy Dalton could operate the offense. I think this is the kind of offense where you, if you know where everyone is and you're prepared to make the throw, it's going to work. I think they have enough middling receiver talent where it potentially could work. But more importantly, I think the run game, we haven't seen it yet. And I think that's the matchup here against Seattle that they could exploit. And and again, you circle, you want to talk about a team that's injured. It's the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, no, I, I said and that. So yeah, I mean, that's to me, if you're taking the Panthers, this is the classic. You're too cute. Uh, D bet in the chat. My nine-year-old son is bigger than Bryce and your, and his well, nine-year-old son hit some insane we, parlors. We did have some sweet. Uh, we did have a sweet trend. If you want to bring that card back up um, on top of the fact that Gino's never covered uh, as a favorite of four points or more, but uh, also we Br- Bryce Young uh, one point nine four yards <laughs> tall. So we wanted to make sure people like understood. That. Not even two yards. Not hitting the two yards. That's embarrassing. That is funny to think if you laid him down on the field, <laughs> he wouldn't be two yards. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> I imagine. Imagine you did a QB sneak from the two, and you just ima- like I think we need to get a Photoshop of Bryce Young laying on the ground and it not getting can, quite two can yards. Can we get him on a <laughs> reference point? Can be Browning the Elf. Okay, so let's, let's see how yeah, big Browning Bryce is massive. compared to Browning the Elf. Kramer, you're on the Panthers here. I think I think this. I is, mean, if you told me if you told I, me Andy Dalton was playing, I'd listen to you. But right now, I think they will trot out Bryce Young still. I think this is the this is the spot where I'm gonna get a little cute. Yeah, this and, is way too cute. And I think, dude, you were the one that was on Seattle being potentially a bad team. Oh yeah, and they I still ca- think they, they are. captured a moment where the Lions were always gonna fuck up Barry Sanders' day, and they they that was it. It was a close no, drive special. Was, to me, it was they were able to hold off the Lions' pass rush to a certain degree. Um, I think Kenneth Walker is gonna be able to run on this Panthers team. There's they shouldn't be laying six points against anyone. I I guess I disagree. Yeah. But Seattle well, obviously a, we disagree. Seattle's a tough place to play, especially if you're a rookie uh, who's clearly overwhelmed by the NFL. Good thing Andy Dalton's around. You have to be this tall to ride the ride. If Andy if they announce Andy Dalton starting, I, I maybe I'll reconsider. But uh, well, Bryce Young's not practicing. We have to assume, right? No, no, Bryce Young's gonna play. You think so? Yeah. Well, uh, the conspiracy theorists have. Uh, I've already started to speak. He seemed healthy at the end of the game. So I mean, you saw that you saw that video of him lining up under the guard, right? Maybe it's time to give Andy Dalton a couple (laughs) snaps. I I just eye test, man. Like he's not even doing interesting stuff running around. What's the if Andy Dalton's playing? Do you like Carolina? Uh, you got to give me seven, but really, yeah. I please don't bet a large sum of money on this. No, I they feel like this will make you upset. This this one, this is a tough one. You got to be careful with this one, Sean. Eighty four percent. No, you're Seattle. just you. You just a guy who fades the public and doesn't. I, I know the public is going to be right. I'm on, sometimes I'm on Miami. This. I'm on. I'm on. What do you, I mean, that's I'm on Tennessee. Those are public teams as well. Uh, I think you're. I think you're, you're generalizing. One twenty five on the West Coast. One of the three late games. Not the best late slate. I hate to throw some shade at our commissioner, but. The Dallas Cowboys head to Arizona, where the Cardinals are eleven and a half point home dogs, plus four forty on the money line, it's minus six hundred for the Cowboys. Forty three is the total. Dallas catching eighty three percent of the dollars. Uh, another one of the lops or of the bets. Another lopsided one here. I mean, this is uh, this. I would assume this falls in the same category for you about not getting too cute. So you'll be on the Cowboys. Um, no, I, I mean, again, I, I generally don't just blindly, you know, look at the money splits and make my picks off that. I like Got the it. fact that Jonathan Gannon, th- that defense is playing pretty well. I think he's scout. I mean, you look at, and it, it's kind of set up nice for Jonathan Gannon in hindsight. I, I didn't see this coming, but he plays a commander's team, which he's seen a bunch. He's played a oh. giants team, which he's seen a bunch. And now he's playing a Cowboys team, which he's seen a bunch. And this is the perfect time to fade the Cowboys. They're smelling themselves. They've uh, you know two and O. Everyone talking about Super Bowl, and meanwhile, this Cardinals team—they're playing hard as hell. Like they're, you can't tell those guys they're tanking. I said that last week. I said that week one. They covered both times. I think they're not factoring into the, the this spread that like this team doesn't quit. Josh Dobbs doesn't quit. When you're an astronaut, you don't know the meaning of the word quit. 
When Apollo 13 got stuck on the ha- other side of the moon, they didn't go, "Oh well, we're fucked. Time to tank for Caleb Williams." Okay? Uh, those, that that, like that astronaut guys. that um, Tom Hanks played, I don't know his actual name, but Tom Hanks just didn't say, yeah. Oh, fuck it, we're not getting back to Earth. Yeah. He said, We're going to give me my pen and paper, give me some duct tape. We're going to cover this damn spread. Yeah. I, 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 I actually really like the Cardinals here. They're not a super talented team, but they play hard as hell, and Dobbs makes some plays. Better than you think they are. Yeah, I think it could be a very similar thing to the Cowboy or to the Giants game where. Uh, they catch them sleeping. They get a they get a rain Dakota Prescott pick. He he loves to throw them on the road. Week three, twenty twenty two. Yeah, a quarterback that some some would say didn't does doesn't deserve to be in the National Football League leads a garbage team in a victory over a Super Bowl contender. Open your eyes. That was Matt Ryan and the Colts beating Patrick Mahomes <laughs> and the Chiefs at home in a game that didn't fucking make sense. That's this game. Okay. That is this game. This game's not going to make sense. There's no way they're going to just ro- come in here and roll it out and win by another 40 points. Micah Parsons is doing a fucking podcast now. I don't know if that's a distraction, but I'm going to mention it. No. No. I do think you're Gannon points. We did. We, if you remember, we discussed this when we were breaking down the schedule. I think the joke was he's uh, he's still in the NFC East or something along that. Way. So yeah, I mean, I think the familiarity matters. We'll see if if he has the 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 dogs to to battle. But you know, this comes down to how well will they get it blocked up. They blocked up the Giants pretty well, but I, <laughs> we don't know what that means. No, I, I get it. They can they can wreck the game. But I think people are remembering that Jets game. One that was that was in home, that was at home for Dallas, and I think Josh Dobbs looks better than Zach Wilson right now. James Connors running hard as hell. I think this is a this is just a tough game for the Cowboys to get up for. What are they playing for? Uh, wins. I, I get it, but uh, this to me just I, I don't. It's a you're eleven and a half point road favorite. I, I don't think we're there yet with the car with the Cowboys. Well, I mean, we were never going to take the Cowboys. They they no. also have a big look ahead spot against New England next week, so be careful, guys. <laughs> All right, last of the late slate: Chicago, the Bears on a back-to-back road spot. They're heading to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. I mean, the afternoon slate. We'll just call it the uh, public fade the public hour because another one very lopsided here. Much of the action on Kansas City laying twelve and a half minus six seventy five on the money line. Bears plus 490, 47 and a half is the total. A lot of controversy swirling as uh, Justin Fields maybe called out his coaches, then he apologized. Then he, apologized. Said he didn't call out his coach. Well, and then th- then their DC resigned. There was a bunch of crazy rumors uh swirling about what it was. Then his attorney comes on and says, uh Alan Williams resigning as Bears defensive coordinator. Um, does it have anything to do with the criminal matter? He says, thank you for that question. There's absolutely no criminal activity. Uh, his attorney said strongly and unequivocally, the fact that the attorney is chiming in on your uh, resignation is, is well, weird at the very least. Sean, when do you have an attorney speak for you when you're guilty, <laughs> right? Uh, sometimes when you're, when you've been accused of things. Certainly, uh, there's but generally when you're guilty, if you're innocent, sometimes you might want to speak for yourself. <laughs> I would say, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? That's completely bullshit, but that maybe you don't do that. Who there's rumors of FBI raids. Uh, we'll let that shake out, but uh, peanut Tillman is in, is a, is, is, well, a, now is that, an FBI agent. He actually is an FBI agent. There was a post saying that he was the one who called the bears and then, uh, and then the bears GM and the owner, they were crying. And then that turned yeah, out to be what? bullshit. Like, I don't know. I'm not a journalist. This Just up. tell me what actually happened. We'll wait till that uh, happens. But on the other side, this is as far as the game, this is pretty interesting because the Chiefs defense to me again you talk about surprises the Chiefs defense being pretty good has been a bit of a surprise and no Eric B enemy maybe that's why they started slow no Travis Kelsey week 1 they did get Travis Kelsey a touchdown only 17 points now they're a big favorite this is setting up for a get right spot for the Chiefs I, what are the Bears playing for? The whole weirdness with the defensive coordinator Justin Fields calling out the coaches then apologizing for not calling for saying I didn't call out the coaches. You're getting my words twisted. Two designed run for Justin Fields. 
Yeah, let's talk about it. I mean, and, how is this team going to win? And Sean games? King, our uh, our coworker over on Vison, I, I thought he had like a really good point. Former uh, quarterback for the Tampa Bay Bucks, he's like, you're trying to get him to process and read the whole field. Like he's young, he's inexperienced, he's not seeing the field well. Like you know, get some boot action, get him set up to only have read like one third of the field. Like make this easy for him. He has he has a skill set and. Maybe he just truly does suck this hard, but the Bears play calling and what they're trying to get him to do, they're not setting them up for success at fucking all. Like, even when Jalen Hurts, who is a much better version of Justin Fields, even when he was early on, they they set him up with like easy reads, easy, like, hey, either throw it to this guy, throw it to that guy, or run. And and like made it very easy. Let him build confidence. Let him slowly work up to seeing the field better. Now I'm not trying to make excuses for um, Justin Fields, who's played really shitty, he should have figured it out by now. But as a Bears coach, he he has it. Uh, so let's let's figure it out from here. How are you not designing? Yeah, how are you not giving him like five or six design runs a game just to keep the defense honest, just to give it's him stupid. easier looks? <clears throat> it's stupid. It's Jason Garrett Lyle a level of stupidity. Yeah, it's like the with Danny Dimes. He, did he? You know, when they made the offense easier for him, he did better. It's it's always shocking when you get someone uh, who comes in and is thinking about how can I make the me- the best out of the situation I have. Not okay. Here's my square pegs. Yeah. Let's see if we uh, can- Ben Carey on uh, Twitter uh, was like quote tweeting this stat. <laughs> this is hilarious. 320 passing yard yard games since graduating high school. So college and pro. Patrick Mahomes 60. Justin Fields one. Tim Tebow too. <laughs> Whoa, Tim Tebow getting in there. Nice. I know. Yeah, Justin Fields five wins. I and remember if you remember when he was coming out, Sean. Uh, that was he was really the first guy that popped on the other side of the K metric, and there was a lot of a lot of people when I said you remember this. I got the intel. It was like he might be a little little slow on the chalkboard, a little bit a little slow on the whiteboard. Yeah, and a lot of people came at me. <laughs> So that was out. Oh, you're racist. There was there was a whole thing like Ringer the Ringer had a whole article about how the critiques of Justin Fields are racist. And and then they never like follow up with go, "Oh, maybe you guys are right. Maybe he does suck." I think fantasy-wise, this is a very interesting game because I do think he's he even had a quote earlier before he threw the coaching um the yeah. staff under the bus. He had a quote that said, "I got to get back to football the way I play." I gotta, I gotta just Does, f and win, man, or something like that. That to me sounds like a guy who's going to run the ball a ton. Doesn't that strike you as take the points because he's gonna backdoor this no matter what? With, to some degree, yeah. I guess the other side is, man, like there, Mahomes. There's a lot of quit in this Bears team. From as a guy who had Tampa Bay minus two and a half, there was a lot of quit in that team. Well, I mean, I, let, let's 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 give them the benefit. Let's say the defensive coordinator thing was abrupt, and Eberflu had to come in and maybe call plays him. last minute. Maybe rally, and him. maybe just even having a week of normal preparation for himself will help them fix things up. Again, he's the defensive coordinator, right? He should come in and be able to do it better than this guy. So maybe it's an upgrade, and maybe Justin Fields saying "fuck it" and having to deal with all these annoying ass reporters is just going to let him go out and ball. So. I'm inclined to take the points here. Mahomes four and twelve straight or ATS in his last sixteen games after a straight up win. So, well, and him, it, you know, sometimes the Chiefs do struggle to cover I, massive spreads. I think this. I again, I think I, I brought you back to that Colts Chiefs game for a reason last week three in 2022 because it was the same kind of game. No way. Well, would the, it the make Colts sense? game was a close your eyes special. To be fair, was it? Yeah. Okay. How? Wh- wh- where were the beer bears at in terms of close your eyes special? Unfortunately, uh, they, they, they were only lost the by they only lost by ten. They they, probably they had no bu- they had no business being in that game. <laughs> That's but another angle. They should have. They probably should have won and covered the game, or at least may- covered. The maybe game. someone with like a supercomputer or or whatever Give me can bears. tell me zero oh and two straight up, zero oh and two against the spread, getting twelve and a half week three. Ryan, this is this is a. Uh, this is a hey, it's not gambling isn't so easy type of weekend. Yeah, and I think the cards and bears are gonna are gonna bite people in the ass. And, and Carolina, it's gonna be a bloody afternoon. Not Carolina, and Car- that's that's where we're different. <laughs> I'm gonna lock up Seattle just to piss you. No, off. you're not. Yeah, what? Or Detroit? What? 
Well, That's we'll crazy. Stay tuned. That's crazy. You're gonna lock up Jared Goff or Geno Smith. That's crazy. It fading. See, this fading is, Bryce Young. Just yes, so the please. audience can listen, you're getting to an irrational place just to try to prove a point. They're not gonna want to listen to those picks. Those are tainted picks. Sunday night football, five twenty on the West Coast. Pittsburgh Steelers coming off Monday night. Nice little win there for the Steelers defense. Not sure about the offense yet. Raiders. They're the host. They're laying two and a half. This one had me scratching my head. We do love the Steelers a little bit too much. Minus one thirty-five on the money line. Steelers coming back one fifteen the other way. Forty-three and a half is the total. All right. <clears throat> Great nugget here. Jimmy G is a lifetime VIP member at the Hustler Club. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy G. Do you know what the value of that <laughs> membership is? Josh McDaniels apparently enjoying the uh, nightlife. There's that you know it was put out by like a PR team by by the hustler, valued at half a million dollars. <laughs> Wait, they, that's what they said. I know I'm gonna need to pull but it. But now, what are we talking about? The VIP membership. <laughs> we actually have to walk through this because uh, if, if you're getting free entry, anyone can get free entry to a strip club. <laughs> oh, it, there's that's a, the price of. It, it's like right. a hot chicken into a club. They need you there. Larry Flint's Hustler Club has offered a lifetime platinum VIP membership to new Raiders quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. Value. At 500k, <laughs> and that, that's put out by Vegas locally. So what does that? What does that get you? Because uh, if you're getting a lap dance, what are you not going to tip your Jimmy G? Hold on, Hustler Club is within walking distance of Allegiant Stadium, <laughs> so maybe that's the team issued masseuse. That's that's all I can wonder. Uh, <laughs> look, I I'm not really. This is a very very puzzling line. I don't know why. To, I mean, again, do you want to just run back all the Tomlin as a dog stuff? Tomlin as a dog. Dog. Raiders <laughs> as a home favorites is bad. Seventeen and thirty-three ATS. The matchup that uh, a lot of people in fantasy are talking about, and certainly is something to be worried about, is Josh Jacobs against this suspect um, Steelers rush defense. Now, the Steelers offense has been horrible. Four point three yards per attempt. They're thirty-second. In the NFL, but to their in their defense, they've played the 49ers and the Browns, essentially the two best, like two of the, I mean, two of the top defenses in the league. So it's easy to make an excuse for the Steelers. And I think this is actually going to be a get right home game. There's gonna be 80, 90% Steelers fans at that Raiders stadium. Yeah, oh my God. Uh, I, I think I so think so many. I think this is going to be a great opportunity for Kenny Pickett, who has struggled, who has looked rough. I think this is going to be a, a nice back bounce back game against this against this uh, Raiders defense, and then the Raiders offensive line. I think T.J. Watt. I just I keep coming back to him as a game wrecker. Him against this offensive line, it's a tough spot for the Raiders. Similar situation, right? Like we watched Cleveland be able to move the ball on the ground. Obviously, there's an advantage there, but. The quarterback, in a couple moments of weakness, turned the game on a dime. And Jimmy G is the same kind of quarterback. The Steelers defense starts winning in a major way up front. He's going to make a mistake. He's going to turn the game with a turnover. And to your point, I do think I actually think this this is an opportunity for the Steelers offensive line to get right. We've seen some teams have their way on the ground against this Raiders team, both in Week One with the Broncos. I think we were very high on Samaje P Ryan after watching him barrel through the Raiders defensive line a couple times. And last week, I mean, so much so bills fans are chirping at me about my comments about the bills, not being able to oh, run the ball they, they, because they, they, they were able to quote smash the Raiders. I do think this is going to be a good opportunity for the Steelers. So yeah. yeah, obviously we're here. This, this does identify as a nice teaser leg as well. Um, yeah, not much to add to that. I, I mean, y y the one trend I guess I would add that I really like is Kenny Pickett five and zero in primetime spots ATS. The, is they're calling the opposite up, Daniel so. Jones. Oh, that's yeah, again you're just uh, you're throwing these emotional uh, bits of shrapnel at me. It's <laughs> completely unnecessary. Ryan, you know what is necessary? Sign it up for Hall of Fame bets. Love me the Hall of Fame bets app, the website. It's great for uh, research and parlays, getting the best number. Um, I, I, so much work I waste on um, uh, on um, Pro Football Reference, just like digging up numbers. How many times has this guy gone over thirty five and a half rushing yards? How many times has uh, Trevor Lawrence thrown an interception? It's great. I mean, it's simple plug and play. It's it's so awesome for putting together parlays. 
app very easy to use. Highly, highly recommend it. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame Bets. All right. Sorry, I was I was doing some uh just a little social media showing how people how much we love the National Football League. Sean, we're about to take over a hundred minutes. No oh, wow. fucking awesome. Monday night football. They're going back to back again. Uh, uh kind of back to back, little concurrent streams. Uh hour gap between uh, kickoffs here. Uh, ho- hopefully we can focus on both games. Four fifteen on the West Coast. The Eagles of Philadelphia head to Tampa Bay. Go birds. Strip clubs everywhere. Ooh, a lot of sharps, Ryan, like you on the uh, on Tampa Bay. Philly. This line went from six and a half to four and a half. Nice try. Philly coming off Thursday night with the mini buy. They're catching 71% of the bets. Laying four and a half minus 205. Bucks plus 170. 45 and a half is the total. Uh, why th- this number is insane. What are we doing here? We're believing Baker Mayfield. We're we're believing that Baker Mayfield is the guy. Do you know the last Bucks quarterback, Sean, to start two and zero and have no interceptions? You mentioned him earlier in the show. It was the year two thousand. Name is Sean King. Oh wow! Okay. Baker, yeah, I like that. I threw that. Baker's uh, in Sean King territory. Baker is in Sean King territory. I don't know if this is. Gonna be great here. I uh, did throw the Jalen Hurts seven and thirteen ATS away from home up on the uh, up on the old board. So so I was high on the Bucks coming into the season. I gave them out what was it like eight to one, nine to one to win the NFC South. Everyone thought I was crazy. Everyone thought I was bonkers. But uh, you're seeing what I liked about them. I think if they they put uh, Baker in a simple enough system. If they, you know, let him get the ball to Mike Evans, who's clearly motivated, clearly fired up, they can win some games. I think their defense is a little bit underrated. That being said, look at this schedule. Like the Bucks haven't played a real defense yet. They haven't faced a a tough interior defensive line, which they're going to see on Monday night. This is um this is a great spot for the Eagles. You know, Ryan Jensen being out uh, for the season certainly. I think will hurt the Bucks long term, and it's going to hurt them in this game because Ryan Jensen is the kind of guy you need to face the Eagles' formidable defensive line interior. I think this is a good spot. They they played now they they did an okay job. I, even Justin Jefferson had himself a monster game against the Bucks. I think AJ Brown could also have that monster game. The Eagles have created six turnovers so far this season. That's not ideal for Baker. Um, the Bucks just aren't. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't do interceptions anymore. So. <laughs> you may not catch that. I, 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 Baker is more fun to root for now that he's been humbled. That being said, I just don't think they they got a shot in this game. The Eagles' defensive line is really going to be the difference. I think the Eagles' run game can be slowed down a little bit by the Bucks, but I think they're. I think this is a Jalen Hurts, AJ Brown, a little bit of Devonta Smith, Dallas Goddard sprinkled in. I think they're going to win the game. Passing Gainwell, Bradbury, Blankenship, uh, cornerback uh, James Bradbury. Obviously, Avante Maddox, their slot corner, uh, could be out for the season. It looks like, but getting Reed Blankenship back, getting James Bradbury back, Kenny Gainwell is nice to have in the running back rotation. This is a uh, this is a good spot for them. Do you know? Uh, so since Baker Mayfield was drafted, he has the most interceptions in the league. Do you know who number two on that list is? This came up for research for an earlier game. Drafted in the same class, John. Baker was number one. Josh Allen was number seven. They are one, two in interceptions since the year 2018 when they were drafted. That's that's impressive. Philly, yeah, Philly's gonna eat. Philly defensive huh. uh, anytime touchdown in play here. Super team assemble. I heard they're going after Buda Baker. Only getting stronger out there in Philadelphia. Yeah, I mean God's if they, with um yeah, I mean, with losing Avante Maddox, I do think that hurts them. So, yeah, if you can trade for Buda Baker, make the team better. Why not? Yeah, this this number implies that the Bucks are going to be able to to move the ball in offense. I just don't see that being the case. Rams, they're heading to Cincinnati. This this is a rematch of a big game, I think. Sean, five fifteen on the West Coast, Super Bowl, baby. Bengals minus two and a half, minus one forty on the money line. Rams plus one twenty, forty three and a half is the total. Of course, the story of uh, Burrow looking hurt, then getting more hurt, allegedly. 
now uh, this number obviously I, I don't think this is full burrow out uh, I think Rams would be favored if burrow is gonna be out Sean who is the backup quarterback for the Bengals Jake Browning Jake Browning from Louisville Washington Jake Browning has one career pass attempt and he's a favorite uh, what am I what am I missing here there certainly is something scary about a desperate two and0 Bengals team at home a kitchen sink type game. But the Cincinnati defense has really not looked good. I, I think if it wasn't for that Kyron Williams um, out drop that turned into an interception, I thought the Rams were pretty live dogs in that game. I mean, Puka Nakua, Tutu Atwell, Matt Stafford just looks great. Uh, he had that other bad interception, two picks, but and the Rams defense, while they were a little outmatched, I think against the the Forty ers there. I just uh, I'm I'm in on this Rams team. So yeah, give me the Rams plus two and a half. I don't think um I don't think Joe Burrow plays. So th- this is I, I'm scared to lock it up because I do think there's a, a the 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 desperate nature of this Bengals team at home in a primetime game is scary to go against. But I can't take Jake Browning as a favorite, and that's what uh, I think is going to be played. Yeah, quarterback. especially them coming out of the coming out of a situation. I mean, two divisional games in a row. You can yeah. certainly make the case as to why this would be a game where maybe they can shine a little brighter against a team that doesn't know them as well. But to your point, I think so. Uh, it's interesting, right? Because if you if you like the bank, if you think Burrow is playing, you can take the Bengals, and you're going to get a discount on the number. And if you think Burrow's not going to play, you can take the Rams. But do you, I mean, and get a discount on the number? I don't understand. But Burrow I, looks like he—he's not stepping into throws. Oh, he looks you, clearly uncomfortable. Oh, you uh, and obviously their defense watched the game good. with me on a Sunday because that's all I'm screaming at. Yeah, he does not look healthy. Uh, big mistake laying the points with him last week. Hopefully, I'm not—we're not zigging or zagging too hard here, taking the Rams. But I—I don't—I don't see how I can. I mean, if Browning is the starter, Rams minus two and a half is the number. I think. Right? Is yeah. it is it minus one? Uh, they're definitely favored. Right? Oh yes, there's. Uh, I just said it. Jake Browning's attempted one pass. You cannot make that guy. A so favorite. what do you make the number? I think you make it Rams minus three. Yeah, oh wow. Okay. So then we're made. We're, we're. I don't know. Maybe we're sharp. Right. Maybe now. it's crazy because the the look ahead was seven and a half. So maybe there's a. So let's say yeah. I don't know. This is because they've moved it five points from the look ahead. Now some of that was I think the Rams looking competent. But a lot of that obviously was the injury news, right? So they've moved it. Here's how I see it: they moved it five points, four of which was the the Burrow injury news. One point was the Rams looking better than people thought. So I think they still got to move it. Yeah, I think they got to make it um, Rams minus three. Who's who's taking Jake Brownie as a favorite? Any line adjustment for Cam Akers not being on the team anymore? (laughs) I mean, honestly, like the in the way that uh, McVeigh is covering spreads this year, uh, please just give. It's like Lane Kiffin levels. (laughs) Yes, I mean he kicks a field goal with no time. Real men of DJ and Sean McVeigh love that guy. Love his soup commercials. Uh, yeah, he does like bringing soup to the IT team. That's nice. All right. Sean. Happy birthday. Time for the lock dog and tease. Let's do it. What do we got, Kramer? Go ahead. Oh, am I going first? Why, why we can't we, we can't fuck with the the the, the mojo. But my locks are only fifty well, percent. I, I guess my ATS record's been good. It's a team record and your dog and tease record is flawless. Yeah. So let's zoom out and make sure we look at the full picture, Sean. Let's go to some old reliables. Give me uh New England minus three. Okay. <laughs> How are you, Belichick beats uh, the Jets? Uh, it's yeah, ugly, no, that's, but that's that's a fair angle. Yeah, I do want to take some spite locks here. I mean, Detroit minus three and a half. Seattle. You do what you got to do. Mm. You do what you got to do. Let's see here, it's a lot of pressure. I know this is this is good to be thinking about. Maybe talk out loud what you're thinking so everyone can enjoy your. I thoughts. do like Detroit minus three and a half. I do like. Miami minus six, Green Bay minus two. I don't know if those are locked. I mean, I just keep getting sucked into Vrabel as a dog. Plus three yeah, and a half. Just do it. Don't. Yeah. Why? Why are you overthinking that? I was I'm surprised. Not, if you're gonna Tennessee be t- plus three and a half. Right, there you go. And then my well, it was debate of whether to make them my money line dog or to include them, et cetera, et cetera. I will. Uh, as much as I want to make the Cardinals money line dog. Washington is a live dog. Yeah. 
I it's small, but I'm gonna have to go uh, Steelers because that's just such a good spot for them. Pittsburgh on the money line. It's a tiny dog. I'll give myself the tiny dog sound effect. And then for the tease, uh, <laughs> I mean CLV God Rams plus eight and a half. That feels pretty good. Seattle down to pick. And then uh, last but not least, uh, Miami pick. I mean, that's pretty. Uh, yeah, who else are we teasing? Yep, uh, I could. You could talk me into San Francisco minus four. You know what? Yeah, I'll do that. San Francisco minus four. Seattle pick. Miami pick for the tease. Final answer. No, I'm going back to Rams. Rams plus eight and a half. Classic Wong teaser. Final answer. Long. Cox. New England minus three, Tennessee plus three and a half. Pittsburgh on the money line. Yeah, I like this. All right, what do you got, Kramer? All right, lock number one. I, 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 I just th- this this to me, sh- th- this Washington number is way too big. Mm. I'm taking Washington plus the six and a half. Wow, this is a look at me. I'm sharp play. Is it? Cause it just seems like we watch football and this is going to be a matchup. That's going to be a little bit. I can, yeah. I can see this Washington yep. commanders team. You mean and bills? No, I think it's a good, you said said it's going to be good, difficult good match- for oh. commanders. Oh, I thought I said good matchup. Are you sure? Okay. We'll have to check the tape. Washington good match has a go, a couple good uh, matchups specifically along the line of scrimmage. And again, the enemy, a decent amount of experience going against this Buffalo team lock number two, uh, Buck off with your Detroit. Give me Atlanta plus oh, three and a half. No. I might have to put uh I, I might have to put Detroit in as What a do you mean? Amon Ross St. Brown is banged up. This yeah, Atlanta this team bad. struggles against number two receivers. The Detroit Lions might not have a number two receiver if Reynolds has to bump up to be the number one. If Amon Ross for St. Brown is not hundred percent, which he won't be, toe injury, Sean. Again, the curse of his dad talking all Taking that shit on three Kevin and a Durant. half. All right. Oh, you you're you are out of your mind right now. And uh dog, man, it, very difficult to uh come to the table with this, but uh, 320. Houston Texans, all they do is win in Jacksonville, Sean. Jacksonville looking ahead to a two week trip in London. So a little bit of added yeah. bonus to the look ahead there. And for the tease, well, the, the, I don't know how you don't put uh, the Ram. I'm with you. Give me the Rams plus eight and a half. Give me the Steelers plus eight and a half. Surprised you didn't throw that one in there. I like it, but and I had it as my money line dog. I don't like to tease ah, that's and put the same team that's in true. the dog. And give me the Ravens down to minus one and a half. Yeah, that's a good tease. All right. Any sort of a uh, round robin money line DJ play, AKA our little Caesars pizza bet of the night. Uh, well, I certainly think if you wanted to really get funky, you could, uh, there's a couple long dogs there. You could, what do you want to, you want to do a little Buffalo? Uh... No, I'll do, uh, I'll do Tennessee, Houston, and then Detroit minus three and a half. Wow. Yeah. What is that for? Just cause you're, you're wrong on Atlanta. You're you're it you can't just lock up Atlanta every week. It's gonna have consequences. I'm what do I you hope mean? not. I hope not. I hope you hit it. Is it two and oh so far? Yeah. Okay. Just I was just checking. <laughs> I don't so you're you're off on it because you were wrong about it last week and you got upset about being wrong about it? No, I mean if it you feels if you bet it like, at uh at closing line value, then then you won. Oh, wow. So. Wow. What's your DJ play, Ryan? Woo. So Tennessee and Houston that on is, the money line, that and then put bold. Detroit in there. Houston, Washington, Chicago money line parlay. <laughs> okay, all right, that's wild. Uh, so for our circus survivor, are we going Miami? That's what we determined preseason. Uh, okay. the, so I, I did the pivot would be we 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 could. Uh, the question becomes: Do we want to save Kansas City for later in the year? They're on one of the holidays. Or would we want to pivot, take Kansas City? I, I don't think we take. I think we stay on Miami. We we yeah. figured this out a while ago. Why are we going against the current? I I don't know. I'm not looking to. to no, shift let's it keep up. it. All right. So for our circa millions, you got Washington plus six and a half. Oh yeah, dogs, baby. Atlanta plus three and a half. <laughs> New England minus three. Tennessee plus three and a half. And then I, I don't. Do you know. want to play Detroit minus three and a half as well? 
No, it's not a bad strategy. <laughs> I mean, at least we would get one win there. Uh all right. So th- things we agree on that we haven't added to the card yet. Uh Houston. Which okay. I don't know. Miami. Uh, that's bad juju. We got him in the survivor. Arizona. Pittsburgh. Philly. Rams. Yeah, so I guess to me, the favorite ones to add on to the card, Pittsburgh, I had them as my money line dog. I think Pittsburgh or yeah. Uh Houston. I like the history there. It's nine and a half. I'm worried Houston may be a little too cute, but it's a big fucking number. Pittsburgh, man, I don't know. It seems like just just that just that crowd going nuts in that Thunderdome. Yeah, let's take Pittsburgh. All right. Fuck it. Yeah, because I think they're gonna they're gonna get it done. I wonder what this circle line will close at. I wonder if we could get a Pittsburgh plus three. No, I think it goes the other way, if anything, right? All right. So we have one favorite, four dogs, New England minus three, Atlanta plus three and a half. Washington plus six and a half, Tennessee plus three and a half, Pitt plus two and a half. Oh man, so much to get to. Obviously, guys, appreciate you uh, checking out the show. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Uh, we got our DFS show, then our pick show Sunday morning. We got a uh, new and improved SGPN pregame show with some uh, Kramer and I, nine a.m. Pacific. But then lead-in shows as well from the NFL show fantasy football guys. And of course your live calls pre and post game on Sunday. So much to get to. And of course, don't forget nine o'clock of Eason Friday night. And uh, of course the Patreon, get that bonus uh, tales from Vegas, go a little uh, uncensored. That is not, don't play that uh, episode around the kids. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stack of the money green. He's Ryan. A lot of shit jokes. Kramer. Let it. Brad.